Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to Throwdown, episode 206 
I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. What's up, people? How's it going? Chris Seeley. Hey, what's up, everyone? Carlos Romero. What up, what up, what up? Brian Monjoma. I'm appalled at the treatment of people of non-playable origins. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam Vale. Willy Wonka for life. Yeah, man, sucker free Thursday, man. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, um, we don't know what's going on with Brett. He may show up. He may not show up. You know, whatever. <laughs> like I said, whatever. You know, if he shows up, he shows up. You know, hope everybody had a good week. You know, all that. How's everybody doing? M- Manny, remember when you started the shows like that? How's everybody doing? Hey, how's everybody doing? <laughs> I, I, I was, yeah. It was a very different energy on my on my uh, version of Throwdown. Yeah, that was, I call that one the chill down, man. The chill down. <laughs> yeah. I told you when I used to listen to the shows, I'd be like, yo, you could have made fun of him over that. Like, you guys would say shit. I'm like, meh. <laughs> nah, I, I'm not about that. And I, 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 when I told when I told you that, you're like, yeah, it's because I'm not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like R- Riku was talking about um, a fucking Monster Hunter. I'm like, he's saying monster. No one is calling him out on this. <laughs> it would drove <laughs> well, me crazy. We would probably do that. <laughs> you know, or when he talks about Dynasty Warriors, I'm like, dude, he's talking about fucking dinosaurs, man. Call him out. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaur warriors. <laughs> What's going on, people in the chat joining us? Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Um, actually, I don't have any pre things. Uh, actually, yeah, go we, ahead. Yeah, what you got? What you got? Man, thing. You, man, we got a contest in this motherfucker. We got, yeah, we well, we got a we got a little contest going on. Uh, Tell we'll, us about that, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> I like how you deflected that shit on me. All right, people. So, if you want to win a free copy of Red Dead Redemption to the Revenge, uh, basically, it's simple. Just follow us here on the Twitch. Follow us on Twitter and on the Twitter post that's pinned answer with the you know answer a question what's your favorite rockstar game we're gonna pick somebody at random and next week's episode 207 we're gonna ask the winner live baby it's gonna be crazy and you get your choice physical or digital uh do apologize we do not have any copies for the switch or pc because they do not exist so <laughs> none of that you know <laughs> but other than that we got you man and the contest is uh it's bringing in people man we we when we moved over to Twitch, we had like 222 uh followers now we got 276 so <laughs> this shit is working man i just want to know if you guys are going to be sticking around after that you yeah, know what i'm saying hang around with us man you know we, we put on some good content yeah man got some games we got some art we got some some conversations and we got your questions exactly man and we're not just a bunch of like you know con- country bumpkins here we're like industry professionals some of us as we're going to demonstrate tonight with the, with this whole rock star thing you know um any other i think that yeah we don't really have much fluff here by the way i do have a question though what the fuck has been going on with, with um npds i haven't heard from them in a while like usually mm-hmm. they used to drop every thursday for a while then they dropped every tuesday now the uh, system's all broken that's why shit's all fucked <laughs> up you got sometimes they report, yeah. Sometimes they report digital. Sometimes it's up to the publisher to report that. Then they want to report physical, and then some publishers like you can't count physical because you know the the the, the industry is changing. Everyone's going digital. Oh, please, this shit's all broken. Yeah. <laughs> well, they tell you if they count digital or not. They always have a little asterisk. Did you, oh, there. did you hear about how the it works with uh, DVRs? It's even com- more complicated. What would you? Oh, like with TV with yeah. TV shows. So if now that they have the whole DVR system. Um, connected to the nielsen ratings and all that how it works is you'll if you download it let's say you record on your dvr it doesn't count it it only counts if the person or whoever owns it gets to watch or watches the show within three days oh yeah yeah i heard about that it's, yeah it's all so, stupid too yeah yeah it's like oh this is so jumbled and then it was like oh if it's within seven days it gets like half a point it doesn't get the full point of a view you know and then if you don't watch it at all within that week then it just doesn't count yeah, yeah, Nielsen ratings in general are fucked up. They've always have been, you know. Yeah, and you need to have a special box for that. It's not every box. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. The Nielsen families, as they call them, I remember. Yeah, that. yeah. So I'm like, this is all you of can it you can apply for that, and they give you a little bit of money. You know, it's the same shit like when with politics and they do the polls. Oh, we did this poll. It's the same damn people you keep polling. You know what I mean? You're not calling randoms. You're calling people that signed up for this shit. Yeah, exactly. I want to know if Leslie Nielsen has a Nielsen box. That'd be. He's, that'd uh, be he probably wouldn't because he's dead. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Damn, man, man, he's like too that. Soon, really? man, too you know, so harsh. <laughs> that's, that's a spoiler 
right there. I'm sure. He died a few years ago. <laughs> you don't. You didn't see that on the news. <laughs> Would he take his Nielsen box to the grave? He could have. <laughs> well, maybe he had. I want to know if he had one when he was alive. Then I'll I'll change my uh my my thing there. I thought he was still alive. I just thought he no wasn't way, making man. movies no more. Nope. Damn None. man, naked gun. That's it. Oh well. All right, man. So let's get into it, man. Um, first thing we're gonna talk about here. It's the biggest story of the of the week. I know Adam doesn't want to talk about it, but we gotta gotta, gotta dive into it, man. Uh, Call of Duty sales. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll get to that later, oh, though. We'll get to that later. You know. So yeah, we're gonna talk about um the Rockstar and the hundred hour crunch thing. So basically, um I forgot where this shit originated, but basically like. It, oh yeah, they, it, was, it was it was an interview with the yeah. Hauser brothers, and they said that you know they have like you know during crunch time they have like one hundred hour weeks and shit. So, but they said him and two oh, other well, people, yeah. Right? Let me let me finish. You're getting ahead of you getting ahead of the story. So that's what they said, and then you know the media started running with like, oh shit, everybody at Rockstar is forced to have hundred hour weeks and stuff. It, you know, there was a lot of you know um, stuff going on on Twitter, a lot of opinions on that, and then the Hausers came out to clarify. It's like, no, we we were specifically talking about ourselves we do that shit but then you start having conflicting reports some rocks are employing say they they're not forced to do that some others are saying they are and it, it's been really insane it's got the whole conversation about you know should these studios unionize should they you know do you know it's crunch time bad all this other stuff you know very interesting and it doesn't seem like there's any real opinions in the in the center um, but we're definitely going to cover all, all the sides here. Although I, I'm going to jump to my ace in the gun right now. Because, uh, okay, you guys know that Chris has, you know, worked for Nintendo before. But you guys may not know he also worked for Rockstar for a while. You know, so I want to get his insight into all this, you know. By the way, this is the shit I was talking about. Well, the podcast out there with an actual former Rockstar employee. Throw down, motherfuckers. Anyway, <laughs> go, <laughs> go ahead, man. What's your take on all this, dude? Yeah, I mean, I, I could um, I could absolutely see it happening. Because... Uh, and Rockstar has a culture of this. Even I was, I worked in the New York office, right? Which is not um, a studio. A lot of um, the marketing was there and QA and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, just to note, uh, GTA is produced at Rockstar North, which is in Scotland. And Red Dead Redemption is in the San Diego studio. So it's called Rockstar San Diego. Uh, those guys have, have, have always had crazy crunch time. And they would tell us in, in there too, um, especially I remember when GTA five got delayed, I, I was there and they told us that we had to like do damage control because they were delaying the game. And some of us had to get on the forums and, and start responding to people because there was a lot of anger. And they said like every day at rockstar is a publishing day. That's what they told us. Like every day, though, Saturday, Sunday, whatever you are expected to um, be available to work and whatnot. So that 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 is uh, the culture at Rockstar. So you can take that ho however you want, but that is that was sort of encouraged. Not in they can't enforce that shit. Like that when when the, people write these articles and and you notice they use very careful language, like oh we, you're never forced to work. Of course you're never forced to work like that. I mean they make you sign at will employment or whatever. They by U.S. labor laws and whatever they can't make you do uh you know kind of these ridiculous hours and ruin your health and whatever they they'll certainly encourage it though they'll certainly uh fire you for something if you don't they're not gonna say that though right so you it's when these guys are like oh you know i'm a perfectionist put my best foot forward yeah well you damn well better because like if you want to keep working like you you're, you're gonna put in the time and i remember i would i would uh even on stuff I'm doing, I'm just doing websites and doing uh, marketing uh, materials. I'd even go home uh, late from the office too. I'd be leaving there like nine, ten at night, and the QA guys would still be in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I can't confirm this, but I mean, they, they didn't leave at that point, so I don't know if they were sleeping there or whatever. But some of these guys put in like ridiculous hours, so I can absolutely believe that that's the case. I mean, when the first Red Dead happened, that those store those kind of stories came out where they were put, putting in ridiculous crunch time. I never heard a, a number put to it, like a hundred hours, which seems like. I don't oh, see how without Chris, putting say, in 20 say hours that again. Days, say that again. You cut out for a little bit. Say that again. Oh, I, I don't. I never heard a number put to it like this quote from Dan Hauser saying 100 hours, because like you'd literally have to work 18 hours every day of mm -hmm. the week, you know, seven days, like to to, to even uh, get to that. And that's like it, it, 
that's insane. But the, they um, they kind of encourage that for, for products or whatever. So they put this date out. They didn't want this game to be late. So guess what? Guess who gets squeezed? All, all the devs and artists and whatever, they got to they, they gotta put in the time. So that kind of culture is ingrained in there. No matter what they say, I mean, he could come out and say, oh, we, we would never, uh, you know, force somebody to do that. Of course, you can't. Legally, you it's can't force law. someone yeah. to do that. Yeah. But you, you damn well put that culture in there. They, 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 so it, that is in, wink, wink, encouraged. You know, but never forced. Yeah, and the <laughs> thing I want to bring up, you know, just in case you you guys think Chris is telling you some big secrets, no, this has been documented for a while. This is what's going what happens in Rockstar. You know, people you, people you have remember, known about this. Remember a while ago, the Eye of Sauron? Yeah, thing? exactly. But, I yeah, mean, this stuff. So I feel like I. Right. Well, what's your remember, take on it, Adam? Yeah, what's your take? Well, so years ago, was it ninety nine and two thousand? I used to work for a magazine, Yellow Ride Bastard magazine. You, mm -hmm. Right, and it's a magazine. We have crunch times. We have releases. We had to get material out, and I remember going back and forth because I was working in the, the advertising and marketing, and I did some uh, reviews and interviews and stuff, and we we're trying to collect all that information. And I just remember the publisher saying, "No, you got to stay." I was like, "Well, I got shit to do." No, you got to get on the fucking phone and start calling people to get shit done. I was like, "We'll do that Monday." He picked up the phone and he threw the shit at my desk. And he's like, fucking pick up the phone. And it got to the point that I just quit. You know, but it, when it gets to those crunch times, they, they, it's just expected. And that's the other thing. There were other people in the office that, fuck, I'm just going to work all weekend. It had to get done. And that's true. The shit, we had a deadline and shit had to get done. But we also have lives. We all have other shit we want to do and things we need to do. You know, and, and that it sort of made me feel bad. Like, damn, you're right. Maybe I should just stay. And that usually happens also. It's that sort of mentality of like, if everybody else is staying, then yeah. I guess I it's should. Kind of guilt shit, right? Yeah. yeah it's and like that, that guilt. becomes company culture. That's what I mean when yeah. I say the culture. It got to the crunch. It yeah. got to the point because we had, at the time I smoked, and there was other people that smoked, and there was this one of the illustrator that we had and she was like well i need to go for a smoke break he's a like, fuck the smoke you could smoke in the office fuck it you can anybody has a problem with that then fucking leave she's smoking in the office she was like all right and she was just rolling and everybody just started smoking in the office you would think it was back in the 1950s man fucking clouds of smoke everywhere but it got to that point it's like no shit just had to get done eventually that person left and then manny you know malik remember crazy malik mm -hmm. and then malik came in and he was even more crazy but he took the job but yeah we had some high turnover because it, it's just a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. And it's, I feel like that's just expected in all of that, especially like the newspaper industry, you know, where every day you have stories you got to get out and you have to get those stories in before it goes to print. Crunch time is everywhere, you know, and people want to make a big stink about it now because it's the, the new hot thing to complain about. But it's it's always been there. Is it good? Mm -hmm. No, but it's it's never going to go away. It's, it's never going to go away. How do you even solve it? Hmm? Yeah, that's oh, it. They, exactly. How do you even solve that? Well, because like, okay, from my point of view, I mean, like, and, well, you know. By the way, one, shout out to Brett Mur Murdoch. What's going on, brother? What's up, Brett what nerds? So one thing, though, the thing about what, what locks a lot of people into these sorts of situations is the fact that there is no overtime. You know, a lot of people who work these sorts of jobs, which we're talking about, animation that's not in the, you know, um, not in California or you know places that don't have any un unions. Everybody who's working these sorts of jobs is all on salary. And that is the point where you can start when they can start saying these sorts of things to you. Well, if you, you know, you can you can finish it, you know, you could go home, you know, but you still have things to do. Yeah. If yeah. we if everybody bring this had with you, you know, yeah, bring this yeah, with you. Bring you, with you. This up. If yeah. you if you did have a, if you if, if if a lot of these places did have some sort of overtime, I think that and but even then there is a, a certain amount of overtime that you're allowed for I, I know chris you've had you had a couple of positions like that where you had you know you did work late but you did have an overtime payment uh yeah nintendo did that it's exempt versus non-exempt mm -hmm. um status i think for salaries you, usually you're exempt from overtime but they had done it where we were uh, the devs in and um uh designers in nintendo were non-exempt so they would we'd get you could clock overtime which was which was good like, at least you get compensated like <laughs> for that uh, most most uh, uh game studios don't, don't do that mm -hmm. at all so you're not getting comp for that time so if you're working 60 70 80 hour weeks you're not getting a, another dime for that yeah i you think know, you, have to, you have to be within a certain uh salary 
uh, range in order to qualify for overtime. So I'm going to be the asshole here and ask, like, somebody explain to me why this is a bad thing. And to give a little bit of background, I've never worked in a corporate culture. And people that I know that also haven't worked in corporate culture, the general prevailing mentality is it's it's a corporate mindset that I put my hours in and then I'm done. It is a non-corporate mindset of I work until I finish the job. Well, because you're working for someone else. Like, like if you like, like you work for yourself, Brett. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to put in the extra time because it, everything just benefits my, like myself. But when you're working for, I I work for somebody, I mean, I'm an independent contractor, but I work out of a studio, but you're, you're in you're an independent contractor, but that's the same time you, uh, and you officially make your own hours, but the amount of time that you spend on that, you know, whether it be, you know, 50 or, you know, or less than that, it all is essentially the same. And when you, because you're essentially working commission each time you have your set rate, right. For how many out, well, you know, uh, you know. Y- yes and no, yes and no. There's been plenty mm-hmm. of times where I don't have anything scheduled and I still sit at the tattoo shop. Mm-hmm. And the reason is not because I'm expecting to get anything, but because I'm helping towards the greater structure of, of the, the whole that I'm a part of. I'm mm-hmm. actually not getting paid when I'm not doing a tattoo, but mm-hmm. I will sit there and I will, I will schedule appointments for other people because I care and I want to see the shop succeed. And the way you that I always get walk in right? and then eventually somebody may walk in and stuff. Right? Uh, I mean, no, I mean, that's why you, that's no, why you, t- that's why you take your switch, right? That's that's yeah. how I end up getting most of the shit that I had. I just walked in. I'm like, oh wow, that looked cool. All right, put this on my face. I don't take a lot of walk-ins. Um, generally, I hate to say it like this. Generally, my time is a little bit too more valuable than that. I'm not going to sit in the shop and draw your design. Um, pinky out or pinky in? Right? <laughs> oh, pinky out. Pinky out. <laughs> but here's my big question. Yeah. So you you have a corporate environment, right? And it's not mandatory to stay later, but when they go to promote somebody, they're going to promote the guy who does stay later. And no. that kind of creates no, that. No, that no, way either. No, nope. Nope. No. Yeah, that's, right. not, only, that's, not, that's not necessary no. at all. Usually the wife was that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Usually that guy is the one that they don't promote because they're like, he's a sucker doing yeah, he's it. The, he's the workhorse. We got to keep that asshole right where he is. <laughs> we just put him there. Yep. We use him as the chip. He's like, hey, you want to catch up? Because I think that guy's going to get the promotion. You got to catch up to him. And, you know, after a while, you realize, yo, they're never promoting that. It's, the, it's usually the asshole who's who's not doing a lot of shit is usually gets the promotion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hangs out with the big wigs on the weekends. Yeah, that's that guy. Oh, yeah, that's the guy who gets it. You yeah. ever heard about failing upward? Oh, yeah. They're, man. <laughs> oh, man. Look at Marvel. Office. office yeah, office right? Space. Disney, you know? <laughs> yeah, right? Shit. And, and, God also, help the apprentice who thinks he can get away with that attitude. Jesus Christ. Also, regarding towards why why don't people just work more like in their in their corporate jobs and stuff? It's like, well, there's there's hardly any downtime. Like in those types not, of jobs. No, 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 not, not, not why don't they work more? Like from my point of view, and again, I'm not saying this is the way that it is. I'm saying like I probably don't understand the picture. So for those of you out there getting mad at me right now, work corporate jobs, I'm not talking shit. Arr, I'm saying arr, that I, I genuinely don't understand. If you're working overtime all the time and clearly being exploited, then it's an exploitative company and you should try and find another job unless the whole field is saturated with that, which leads us to a completely different discussion but if it's if it's one of those things where from what I gathered we're talking about Rockstar's crunch time, if you go into a job where you know the deadline is going to hit and you're gonna have to pull a couple of eighty hour work weeks, like you know that's kind of part of the job. Yeah. Well, no, well, and, and the it, worst part a, of the, oh, oh, this is gonna be real quick, real yeah. quick. The worst part of all that, Brett, is because then that becomes expected of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The yeah. moment that you open that door, uh, the moment that you give the, give that part of you, say, uh, as a person who's willing to, you know, hell or high water, uh, do the job no matter what, then eventually people will n- people will just dump stuff on you because they know that you're you're going to c- continuously do that yeah. because you can, and that and that sort of sort of stuff happened to me, and it's part of why I was hospitalized not long ago because I was like that. Where I would work and work and work until I got so fucking sick, I, I just was ended up in the hospital. That kind, that kind of uh, culture is, is not 
uh, conducive. Well, I know that becomes health. the norm, and the norm is the bad thing, but, like, it's yep. understandable why it happens, and how do we, how does anybody even stop that? Do you just not let people work overtime? <sighs> It's it's just trying to get an understanding and it's get more contracts that actually say, hey, I understand I that this may happen, but there has to be a limit. And like under a hundred, obviously, you can't have hundred hours. That's crazy talk, you know. But understand, it's like, hey, if this does go to a certain point, are there any benefits for me? It doesn't always have to be about money. Sometimes it could just be time off. You know, I've had jobs same thing. It was like, well, all right, you do all these certain hours, you'll get an extra day off. You know, so it's like, all right, well, I can use that. So, and I can take it whenever I, so I'm taking one Monday off. So, I'll just, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, those type of things. But the thing is that most people, especially if you're young or you're trying to get, or if you think you're getting a dream job, I'm sure a lot of people want to get in the industry of getting like a rock star or something. Mm-hmm. You know, don't bring these shits up. You know, you're like, where can I sign? Well, we're going to have crunch time. I don't give a shit. I'm working on Red Day. Where do I sign? You yeah, know, a lot like, of okay. people don't realize the problem. And rock star, uh, out of a, a lot, every place I've worked at, they were the, <clears throat> the um, I, I'd say they gave you the least amount of paid time off out of everywhere. Like Nintendo was very generous with time off. They weren't like, it, here's the thing. Like it was still a good place to work. There was still, there was good people there and they were very generous with like swag. They give you whatever you want. When they publish a game, they give it to you. They, you know, they, they were very generous like that, but they expect you their crunch time is 365 right it's never like oh the game's gonna launch in two months no eight two months it's 12 months it's any all the time is crunch time anytime they, they need they need you you're you're expected to to work so th- th- and then that's the issue and there's no uh negotiating more pto because that's they just standardize that you sign on the dotted line so Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to um, actually, do you guys want to keep going up? Because I have a, a the whole other thing. Um, but you guys want to keep talking about the co- corporate culture a little bit more. Brian, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, not really. I mean, it it's just what I know as well. It's like because again, I'm a software developer myself, and that's just the mindset that I seem to have, and other people seem to have around me. It, um, I don't know if it's different for me because. Um, I, cause I, I don't like to stop until a job's done. So mm. I'm more than willing to put in the extra time and get that um, done because I like to hold myself up to a certain level of quality. So mm-hmm. it's always like, okay, I don't stop until I know it's done and I'm happy with it. Um, there's been times when I've had like be forced to leave because I just worked like a bit too long. But um, to me, like a hundred hour a week, as long as it's not like every single week all the time, and there's no one like like jumping on your back and like, oh, why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? I think that's okay if the employees are willing to do that out of their own accord. If it's like company policy that you have to, then, well, that's just some bullshit. Well, they'll never they'll never make it a, a yeah. policy. There'll never be anything on paper that you sign that says you need to do those hours. Yeah. But but then, it, no, uh, go, go ahead. Ed. No, and I was just going to say, because, I mean, it's sort of like what I was talking about before. Sometimes it's just the pressure of everything happening. So let's say they don't have to say anything. They look at a date like, all right, this game is coming out October 26th. Let's look at the board and see what we have checked off. All right. Did we do this? Did we do this? Did we do this. We didn't do all this. You guys all know we have, what, two, three weeks before this is done. What do you think we should do? Well, we got to work on it, right? As a team, right? That's it. We already know the goal date. They have to do whatever they can to get to that date because I... they know that some of them are getting bonuses, right? I know that some people, not everyone gets it, but there's some people that get bonuses. So I'm sure they're like, hey, we got shareholders. We have all the things that we have to do that are bigger than us right now. So is there a lot of crunch? Yes. Is it constant? No. But we know that we have three weeks. We're going to have to bust our asses for three weeks to make sure we get this done. And I think that's what he was trying to express, that, hey, we really kicked it in high gear to get this done. And I'm okay with that because – I've been in those situations now, like Brian was saying, yeah, if it's all the fucking time, then you walk out of the fucking place. You're like, wait, I just got here and you're telling me this. But if it's not crunch time, you know, then you shouldn't be doing it. But if it is, it should be expected. That's hey, what. hey, man, the Rockstar releases a game every, like, what, seven years? One crunch time every seven years is fine, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, by the way, I have a really dumb question. Has this game gone gold yet? 
Mm, I don't know if it has or not. Actually, it went double platinum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen any news of this game be gone gold. This game comes out in a week. I don't know what the hell's going no, they on. Just released about... their first official trailer today. So are, yeah, are they punching that shit right now? Is yeah, I think they're going to work on it until the very, very last second. You know, Fucking I think crazy, that's what's going to happen. Yo, it's it's nuts. Uh, the other thing I want to uh, move on here is um the the reactions. Right, the reactions have been interesting. Uh, the one I found the most interesting was the fact some people were legit bold face saying, even though I don't believe a single word of them, they were saying they're going to boycott the game now. Oh please! So he, well, that, that doesn't help anybody. You, you, you well, could so boycott. Like, it means you should boycott every single game because every single game has some sort of crunch to it. So here's my thing. I'm like, I'm like, oh, so, let me get this. so let me get straight. So these people are out there saying, oh, this is horrible. You know, these employees are working 100 hour uh, things. We need to support them. Let's not buy the game that they worked 100 hours a week <laughs> exactly. on. Exactly. Like, wait, exactly. what? Let's not, let's not fund <laughs> Rockstar to be able to continue to have the employee base. That's basically saying, you yeah. know what, buddy? I, I see you're working really long hours. I see that you're tired. I see that's where I, I'm going to do you a big favor. You're fired. Yeah, that's, just, that's exactly what it sounds like to me. So like, okay, so you don't boycott. So you boycott the game. They downsize. And that guy who just spent a hundred hours and, is, uh, and was not necessarily yeah. happy about it. Why not have to spend a hundred hours yeah. anymore? Cause he's not working there. Yeah. 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 And, and he, the, the, the part I love the most people, are, the same people that were crying about these horrible work conditions were doing so on a on a phone that was probably made by slave labor so i'm like okay if you're gonna uh, deprive rockstar why don't you throw away your iphone then you know so yeah. you know what i'm saying i just saw a lot of grandstanding on on, on twitter this week that just really sickened me you know i'm like and, and, just, and let's just be honest man um and i want to give the proper respect here uh shin gok i like that name he's right the people that are talking about boycotting we're gonna buy the game anyway i agree with that I completely agree with that. If you, I assume they've all canceled their Amazon Prime subscriptions. Right? You know, come on, guy. Yeah, thank you. Amazon is another yeah. one. You know, it's like if you're going to really be about that life, be about that life. Complaining to me about this shit on your expensive ass phone made by little kids in Indonesia or something. You know? Come on, man. Yeah. It's That's ridiculous. Funny. Now, you know, but just to get out there, because, you know, people like, like to, you know, uh, not understand words. I I don't think it's like cool that 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 shit happens. But as yeah. somebody that works in the gaming industry, I understand that it's necessary. You know, you got to meet, meet those deadlines. You got to you know get the game out there and shit. So I understand. I think it's kind of fucked up. But it, like like Brandon, you alluded to this earlier. I don't really see a solution to it. You well, know what I'm saying? Uh, I I think there needs to be uh, worker protections. Like the the one uh, like uh, one of uh, the there's there's many newer jobs created like um um develop developers are and software engineers or whatever are newer industry right they don't have a union there's no yep. union anywhere for software engineers or anywhere in this country it's like maybe that's what they need or they need some sort of protections like what a union would give you because they're just left twisted what but uh, like um a lot of a lot of uh, create uh, creative fields like um musicians artists whatever they don't have those either so I think that's where it needs to change. And the unions mm -hmm. need to institute protections like, all right, uh, after 50, 55 hours, that's that's it. That's a it's, wrap. And they cannot be fired for not working overtime. You cannot propose a culture of crunch um, on people and all that stuff. Like There needs to be protections put in, but need, need a, a, a union or something. See, the problem, though, is creative fields. And you know, I, I, I've worked in a couple. I've, I've tried to get into a couple. I'm sure you know a couple of you guys would agree. Creative fields tend to be really in demand, and fields that are really in demand, the more in demand that they are, the more cutthroat they tend to be. I mean, I, I'm sure Manny could give you a lecture on why artists shouldn't necessarily give work away for free, even at the nope. beginning of their career. That is a nope. huge issue. It is. It, 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 it is. Most, it is most definitely a huge issue because obviously you come out of school, you want that sort of. And it, the thing is, it's here's the here's the thing where it comes sort of. You know, when Chris said it himself. When it comes to artistry, when it comes to you know you know software development, when it comes to all of that, all these these different fields, there is nothing to protect the people that do these sorts of stuff. Because there's a if million you people do, waiting to replace you them. Do the job until you. No, you well that's not, that's not an excuse, Brett. Because in like here, think about uh, food service, right? You go you go to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's and become a cashier, right? You could do that easy. There's a there's a a billion other kids waiting to, to take your place. If you're like, oh, sure. this, this, I mean, this this job is hard. Okay, you're fired. And wait, but you know what? In Australia, 
those guys have a union. You come in uh, out, out of school and you go get a food service job, you get a union rep who negotiates your wages. They yeah, want. But, but good luck. Good luck getting that to fly in a comic book. Like the, the cold hard truth is that, yes, that, that is very true. But there's too many pe people willing to toe the line. There's too many w people willing to not jump on the union side because it means their possible opportunity into a creative field. There are so many musicians and artists and things like that. They were like, we couldn't have a tattoo union. You know how many tattoo artists would immediately turn scab? Because they'd be like, fuck that. If these other guys are striking, I'm going to make my money. This is my chance. Yeah. And and there's, also, you know, there's also those sorts people of jump in an apprenticeship. There's also those sorts of situations. But then also, you, you know, like, yeah, there's obviously going to be people that, that, you know, unionizing would mean every single person would do it. But I mean, in fields like animation, and yeah. and also software development, it's a little bit different because of the of the sheer amount of man hours that needs to go into doing these sorts of things. It's not just one vendor; it's many people. That yeah, and they and they do things like workers need protections because if you don't have those protections, like either they come from a union or they come from some sort of regulation that's put in at the state or federal level, right? For workers, like you institute these policies. But here's the problem: if you don't do that, then companies can do things like scams like the um infinite vacation days right which is a complete scam for any company that used to do paid time off when you had a certain number of days and you don't take those days during the year guess what you get paid out for them the next year so what did they do they found a loophole oh you have unlimited time off which means they'd have no guarantee to give you any time off for the year and they don't have to pay you for unused time because it's a nebulous number right so you get things like that and and they just try to squeeze the guys at the bottom Right. So all the money goes to the top. So you need protections in place. And just because we don't have them doesn't mean that it's not something that can't happen. It can happen. And right? the other and the other thing is that it also these sorts of things are on a state by state basis. As a person who's worked in animation, the animation union does not exist in in the in the you know, in the uh, in a lot of East Coast states, but it does exist in California. So a lot of the a lot of the additional things that the union provides you know, as far as uh, workman's protection and all that sort of stuff, that all exists on the on the west in the, on the west coast, whereas everybody on the east usually works salary until you know until you know, until forever. You know, some studios, um, you know, well, that I've worked at actually hire you specifically, and then you get you know, in other words, you're getting a thing, you know, and you get you know all the different things that go for it, as opposed to being just a work for hire. You know. Yeah. All right. Anything else you guys want to say on this? I don't disagree with Chris. I just don't know how we'd get to the place where you're talking about, man. But I just want to say, like, I agree with you. Well, yeah, that, that's I the mean, thing. We don't really know how to solve this. Nobody does. I, I see a lot of, again, a lot of grants standing out there. But it's like, okay, what's your solution that no one's really providing that? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah. obviously people are very uh, angry about these sorts of things. And there's not, you know, there's nothing to say that, you, you know, they don't have well, a solution to the problem. But I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, maybe it's a man, you know, like a, a manpower thing. Maybe it's having more people to do the job than just piling a lot on one guy. The you know? well, one of the ways you don't you don't resolve you don't resolve this is by boycotting the game. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's no. Just ridiculous. Not don't at boycott all. the game. You, you know, know? What, you're, what you're supposed to do is criticize the company for doing these practices, and then people don't like that that narrative going on for their companies because. You know, investors start getting weak on the knees and shit, and that's where you get change, real change. Yeah, I guess that that's gonna be it. But yeah, no, I you know, I don't think any of this stuff is gonna affect sales in any way. You know, no, that's just the way it is. And you know, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. I'm not here to judge on that, but you know, yeah, it's not gonna affect sales. But you know, but we always do hear this about Rockstar. Like every game they come out with, you always hear something. Well, similar, you heard, you know, know, again, it's like you know the Eye of Sauron thing. You remember that? Yeah, that, I remember you know, that. You know, I think we did an episode on that too. To <laughs> yeah, we did. This. And there's variations. Like at this point, EA shouldn't even have any sales, considering how they treat their employees and the stories coming out of like Treyarch and Infinity Ward and all all those stories. So how, how many studios they've closed down? Uh, what they've done to those those guys, and, and it's like. Man, if you guys are outraged at this, like the EA stories are horror stories, you know? They did to the devs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mighty Nerd says, you know, with a question mark, don't buy the DLC. What DLC? Rockstar doesn't really do DLC anymore. They just throw mm -hmm. shit out there for free and have you buy shark cards or something, you know? Mm -hmm. They already know they got you, man. 
I am interested in how outraged some people have gotten over the whole situation. I think it's just, it's weirdly unjustified outrage. Because if the story never came out, then they would have never known that this is a problem. And yet, would they have still been outraged? Well, they wouldn't be outraged well, if they didn't if, know about if, it. If, if a tree in forest uh, falls when exactly. no there, does it make a noise? Yeah. Exactly. It's like, if, if the game comes out and there was like a massive crunch where devs did like 100 hours and the person that, that are outraged now didn't know about it, like, are they still as annoyed by it? Or oh, not? Brian, you, you just reminded me of something because this is something I saw. Uh, basically, someone said that um, if you are a game reviewer and you do not talk about these things in your review of Red Dead Redemption, you're not doing your um, readers a service. I'm like, wait, what the fuck does this have to do with the game? Mm -hmm. So they basically want, like, because you know the game is going to be long. You know these reviews are already going to be insanely long. So they want them to have, like, a bunch of paragraphs in there talking about the work culture of Rockstar Games. What does that have to do with the video game? You know what I'm saying? Or am I okay, crazy? Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with it? No, like, that's... like, as a reviewer, I'm like, I'm not, I wouldn't write about that shit. That has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, that has you know? not, that, that's, that's, you, 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 the review of the game should be just about the game. If you guys want, I mean, <clears throat> look at, uh, talking specifically about Kotaka IGN, you seem to write op eds about everything under the sun not having to do with gaming. So why don't you write an op ed about the work culture there and leave your review for the actual game, right? Yeah. I remember the, some the same sentiment was tossed about with a uh, Detroit. They were like, "Oh, if you're writing about if you're writing a Detroit review, you need to talk about the the work conditions over at um you know Quantic Dreams, all the sexual harassment." I'm like, "What the fuck does that have to do with the game?" You know, it's yeah, crazy. No. Yeah, you're right. Save that for an opinion. It's separate. A review's a review, and a, you know, an opinion piece and an opinion piece. Come on, guys. It, it shouldn't matter. Like, I'll be okay. I was, but there's probably some people who are not going to like this opinion, so I'll start by saying it is just mine. But there is so much conflagration between what somebody produces and who somebody is that, like, it, it, it baffles me. Like, if you were sitting at a restaurant and you ordered a chicken sandwich, they bring you the chicken sandwich, you try it, it's delicious. Waiter's like, how's the chicken sandwich? You say it's delicious. He said, okay, just to let you know, the farmer yelled at that chicken all the time. Would you sit there and be like, well, I mean, the chicken sandwich is now not as good. No, but you, you might be like, well, I mean, I'd prefer humanely raised chicken, but it's still a damn good sandwich. Like, I can understand conflagrating the process, but not the fucking product. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Like, you cannot agree with how somebody does something, but still appreciate the thing that they come up with. Yeah. You, can, you can read books from people with different points of view than you, or people that you may not even necessarily like. There is a line which you're, you you say this is the kind of person I don't want to do business with. I think that's an ethical, moral person. Like you're like I, I don't want to do a business with somebody who like kidnaps and whips children. It's just it's just a preference of mine. If I have to pay a couple extra bucks not to buy products from child kidnappers, cool. I'm fine with that. I prefer not to do business with them. But that doesn't. The rest of the time when it's not that extreme, like. We're not talking about abuse of third world fucking children here. We're talking about grown ass adults working harder than other people feel that they need to. How do you know that there's not even people in this culture who are just like, dude, I work at fucking Rockstar. Literally, I'm a Rockstar employee. It's great. I work at one of the biggest and greatest gaming companies in the world. They make there's no clicks in that. It. There's no clicks in that. They want to hear the complaints. I know, I know, but. The, even if you're like, I don't like how the, the corporate structure is set up over there, and I don't like how uh, they, they have, you know, uh, they don't have enough gender neutral bathrooms, so I'm not going to buy this fucking product. Like, none of that has anything to do with the end product. Like, you can still buy the product and be like, this is a good product. You should make an equally good product and, and fix your sources. Like, but it's not the same fucking thing. Yeah, no, you're right about this. People can't seem to separate the two. You know, it's like, yeah, some of the shit going on at Rockstar is, you know, shady, but is that affecting the game? Yeah. And if it no, isn't, I know, I know tons of people who got tattoos. They're like, they're like, dude, check out that. Like, that's an awesome tattoo. They're like, yeah, dude, I love it. The tattoo artist was kind of an asshole, but tattoo rocks. Like, I know lots of people who don't even necessarily like their tattoo artist. Yeah, and no, that's just the way. I mean, you know, well, some people. But are enough just, about Brett. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah, but but some people are just like that for some reason. They can't make that separation. I'm gonna say something very vaguely because I don't want to, you know, really get into that. But during the summer, um, a very famous guy was um, 
indirectly accused of something from by his ex-girlfriend. I do not like that guy at all. I think he's a fucking asshole. But I was on his side because I felt what he was being done wrong. So basically, it's like, yeah, I don't like the guy, but I could still see things objectively. Same thing with this. Like, okay, it's kind of fucked up what's going on with the employees. But if I get a good product, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing with the chicken. You listen, like, hey, I'm going to keep it real. Right now. Chick-fil-A is another one. That's a perfect example. Like, you know, the, the, the owners there have some shady stuff going on, you know, with some views about, you know, um, you know certain types of people. I'm not going to say it. Um, I don't care. I don't want that sandwich. No, <laughs> you know what I'm like, saying? I don't. Ag- I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree with them morally. I don't agree with their stance. But I like the fucking sandwiches. You Dude, know what I I'm can, saying? I can. I can eat Chick Fil A and still support gay marriage. Yeah. Well, by the way, th- thank thing. you. Yeah. That, exactly. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm all for gay marriage. That's perfectly fine by me. But I don't. I don't want the fucking sandwich. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that, that is probably the most infuriating thing to the people who own Chick Fil A. Is the fact that they're like, well, we own Chick-fil-A. We have a shitload of money. Like, yeah, you make fucking sandwiches. Sh- sit down, shut up, and let people do what they want. Yeah, there was other things. Like, why the fuck do you have to tell sh- people that shut the fuck up and sell me a sandwich? You know? Oh, by the way, th- <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank yeah. you, chicken sandwich vendor. I was really wondering about your moral compass. Yeah, we're going to talk about that chicken. later. Yeah, it's like, I'm eating my chicken. Oh, by the way, I don't support gay marriage. I'm like, bro, I'm eating my chicken. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I don't want to hear that shit. You know, keep it to yourself, bro. By the way, I don't agree with you. <laughs> you know, by the way, uh, yeah. thank you, uh, Shin Gok, for subscribing. Appreciate that, man. Thank but you. Yeah, I'll yeah, uh, just preface one more thing. Yeah. I mean, we'll look, at looking at what you should look at this as like these guys worked super hard on this game, hard, like putting more hours in than, than most other, other other places would like you should you should support this product. If you wanted it, you should support it because mm-hmm. you're supporting the guys who had to burn those hours. But if you if you want change, the way to not do it is is to boycott the game. Like that's bad. Like I I enjoyed my time at Rockstar. It was a great place to work. Uh, even though there was a uh, constant crunch or whatever, I I still enjoyed the time there. Crunch culture is bad, but it's a pervasive problem. It's not just Rockstar games. They didn't start it. They didn't create it. They're not the only ones doing it. It is a, a huge pervasive problem in work culture, especially in America. And yeah, it's something should be done about it, of course. But boycotting the game, that's not going to do anything about it. It's Well, it's kind of dictated by the consumer. I mean, the shareholders and the consumers. So if you really hate crunch culture so much, quit bitching about game delays. Yep, because that's that's exactly where, where it also sure. call, it comes from. Where it's like, oh, if a game is delayed, right? You know, how, how did that, you know, that means that every single, you know, when a game doesn't get delayed, that means that every single person ha- oh, there has to go even harder. Let's call it the crackdown model. Exactly. (laughs) Or the crackdown model or, you know, any other game that has been delayed maybe, you know, a a little longer. It's because they, you know, they had to get, they had to hammer those things out. And time hammers those things out, not just, you know, reaching a date. Because then what's even worse? What's worse than, uh, you know, having a game, what's worse? Having a game that doesn't work and comes out on time or having a game that doesn't come out on time and works great. To, to be honest, I take the game that works great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, I so, do need to address the. Oh, go ahead, Brad. Then I'll address this thing. Go ahead. I was going to ask. Uh, in, in what sense? Because I, I didn't. I didn't read this particular article. In what sense is this article written? Because it just sounds, from what I'm hearing, more like, you know, we really crunch down. We put hundreds of hours. You know, it, was this a "woe is me" kind of written article, or was this? No, more it was talking. It was, it, by the way, I should. I should add. It was Arctic Coals. Plenty of them this week, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they were basically, um, you know, saying, "Oh, this is horrible for these employees. Rockstar needs to change their ways." Blah blah blah. Typical type of stuff. Like, okay, you know what? Actually, you calling it an article is probably the same. Even though there's like ten of them, they they were all the same. They were all the but same. But it's all really based off of an interview that with you know the the, with Hauser. the Hauser brothers. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But were in, in the interview were they complaining or were they more? No, no. They no. Were oh yeah, 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 in, in, yeah exactly. That wasn't even the focal point. The, yeah, the original. Okay, let's go back. The original source article that this all came from. Yes, the Hauser brothers just said this in passing. It's like, yeah, we work a hundred hour weeks trying to get this shit just right, and the media just went, oh, they're making all their employees do this, and then the okay. Hausers, the Hausers came back and was like, no, we're specifically talking about ourselves. Okay, so. <clears throat> These people talked about how hard they worked, kind of as a matter of pride, a, a matter of pride. By the way, Brett, by these people, culture. you mean the people that actually produce and direct and write the games. These are like yeah. the top, top guys yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah like, like they yeah. work hard. They, they, when, when you say that in that context, like Ben, like I put some real time and effort into this. You're not complaining. That's pride talking. You are proud of the product that you've made. And that should be a good thing. That should be something we all applaud. <clears throat> it doesn't, we don't have to even necessarily like support, you know, big crunch time, uh, corporate culture or anything like that. But when you put it like that, these guys are basically saying like, we really put, you know, we, we, we really put our back into this one. We worked hard and we're happy with the thing that we came up with. And instead of congratulating them, we're now talking about boycotting their game because they worked so hard on it. Like what kind of weird fucking culture do we live in? Like I, this is just more proof that we live in the, in the, in the darkest timeline. <laughs> because like you, you shouldn't take something like I understand, and I'm gonna get real d- directly to the people who are bitching about this. I understand that you don't like to work hard, that you don't know what that means, and that when other people talk about working hard, it makes you feel kind of bad because you don't actually work hard. But you know what? Some people do, and some people are proud of the things that they they accomplish when they do work hard especially if it's not in an abusive situation. And I don't think that the people who we're talking about were in an abusive situation. They were crunching to come out with a quality product that they could stand behind. And I don't, I don't, I, I think demonizing that is just a really weird fucked up thing. Yeah, no, I, I see where to go with that other than that. Yeah, no, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, co- all right, a couple of things here, by the way, um, Shingok really enjoys his uh, Torrance Davis emoticon there. Glad you uh, enjoyed it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is interesting. So GZDR says the idea to boycott is to change leadership, not to get the company to close down. But the idea potentially could cost people money if you're not buying the game. You right. know? And the, thi- the thing with that is like, <clears throat> that's bad thinking because you're, you're assuming that the people at the top are going to be the one uh, penalized for that? No, they start. Uh, they start downsizing from the bottom up. So the guys who are going to get laid off by you boycotting a product is the guys who actually build it, yeah, right? Because they're the ones can seem as uh, disposable. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, all the top guys will be still there. All yeah. the same assholes who are yeah. at the top there, they'll just you know knock out the bottom. Yeah. If you think you're injuring the VP of sales and marketing and a V, no, they will never get touched by by that boycott. The guy, the guy who actually had to work 80, 90 hour weeks with the with coding or or uh, fixing bugs or QA and stuff, he's the one that's gonna go, go get shown the door. Failing upward. Yeah. Uh, I also have to say with uh, about that approach, like there's a difference between convincing or persuading and forcing. Convincing or persuading is what people do. It's what you do through discourse and bring up good points. Forcing something to do is mob mentality. The idea that I'm just going to get me and enough of my friends around and and force somebody to do something like you could be doing it for the the, the right reasons, but you're still doing the wrong thing. I think that a, a, a better idea would be to you know, respond with reason and logic, um, propose a better idea, talk about corporate structure educate people going into this field and and, and possibly uh, form a union if you don't in your state. Like, take proactive action. Don't just try and get your pitchforks together to, to you know, throw the Lord out of his castle. Like, that's... Am I the only one who feels that way? Mom mentality is a dangerous thing, and people it's wield it so righteously. Pretty interesting, because I was saying the exact same thing about the whole PlayStation situation. Most of you guys thought it was cool that the mom was trying to force them into a you know cross play. You know, and that's my thing. I don't like mom mentality shit. You know, so I agree with you on that. And I just find it funny that you didn't agree it with it you're talking about jobs. cross play. You know, that, that doesn't cost any jobs. To yeah, but but it's the same thing though. It's it's mom mentality. It's people forcing. It's not mom. It's it's it just is. progression. It's that's it's progression. No, it's no, not. No, 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 no. it's mom yeah, mentality. It because it's it brings mom mentality, more money. bro. No, you make it seem like they're forcing them to put Kool Aid and and coffee. No. Yeah, you're missing the point entirely. It like I'm my, not missing yeah. the point. It's progression. That's gonna cross play is gonna be everywhere in a few years. It's gonna be the norm. We're yeah, never but, gonna talk about but that's, that. But that's, Tony, but Tony, but that's here's besides the, the point. My point is they like they did what yeah. I said they should do with cross platform. Everybody spoke up. 
let themselves be known, let their opinion be known directly to the company, and then the company changed their stance. It wasn't about threat of boycott or loss of sales that did this. It was speaking very clearly and concisely. What are you talking about? The there are plenty of people. Even you said, hey, I'm not going to buy a PlayStation 5 if they do this. So you were you threatening them too? I think that's why they changed it. No, I was, I was telling you a fact. I wasn't fucking threatening anybody. I didn't say I was going to boycott anything. I said that they were in real danger of losing my business to a competitor if they didn't resolve this. Yeah. And that, that's exactly... I, I don't but see the difference. Just, I don't see the difference, man. Because uh, there's a difference between not buy. You, you don't see a difference between not buying a product that you want to buy and not wanting to buy a product anymore. What do you mean? You boycotting, want, but you boycotting want both. is when you don't buy a game or a, a thing that you want that you wanted, because yeah. of their behavior. Okay, what I was talking about was their behavior making me not want to buy. I got you. Because Tony, why are you boycotting Call of Duty? Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, right. Hey, I (laughs) never wanted this shit anyway. You know. Um. Anyway, I just wanted to clear up because I'm like, hold on a second, because I thought because I know I've been consistent with my stance on you know especially Twitter mobs. I'm like, no, they're bad. They're bad in any way, shape, or form. I'm not for it. You know. But Twitter mobs are always bad. I don't. I I think the 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 crossplay though was a lot more of just everybody letting sony know what they want like i i don't think it was because of calls for boycotts yeah well there's some of them but not as much as this though but i'm you know i'm glad you say that though because uh this the other reason the other point i wanted to bring up i'm okay if this were any other company i think they would have you know really caved in in some side of way this is rockstar you think they give a fuck about you they don't care like you can you can you can have all these twitter moms all you want they don't care because they know they're gonna get your money in the end you know what I'm saying? So that that's kind of people who got famous from beating hookers to death with baseball bats and video games. Yeah, they don't care, you know. Other like you know, and any other company would have came out to make an apology or something like that. Rockstar was like, nah, we did. We were talking about us, bro. We get we got a fucking game to make, you know. Rockstar, man, I'm telling you, you know. Um, all right, this was a good topic, man. I liked that. By the way, um, <laughs> Roach Smoke, he's like, yo, I just got off work to hear about work. <laughs> oh, uh, all right man let's move on here uh speaking about um by the way you know before we move on to the next topic we are currently having a um contest for red dead redemption 2 by the way that means your boy tony um i'm gonna be buying two copies i'm buying one for myself and i'm buying one for you guys so i'm giving money to rockstar you know so mm-hmm. yeah we're doing a contest right now um if you haven't entered already make sure you follow us here on twitch and over on twitter and go to twitter and the pinned tweet is going to be asking you what your favorite Rockstar game is. Reply to that. We're going to pick somebody at random. We're going to ask them. Episode 207, man. Uh, throw down. It's going to be live next week at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So uh, be there and be square. All right. Um, let's move on to more Red Dead Redemption shit. So the Red Dead Redemption 2 file size um, has been, I guess, leaked. You know, um, leaked slash confirmed. It's going to be 100 gigs. 100 gigs. And now he... Oh. Yeah, and now here is the rumor part. The rumor is, and this is coming off a Japanese listing, this is a current-gen game that's going to come in two discs. Two Blu-rays. Two Blu-rays. Two, hey, oh, shit, the Coalition is following us. Awesome. (laughs) Thank you to, I'm guessing that's Rich. Uh, The C1? What? Gears of War? Nice. Coalition TV, (laughs) man, with with a K, man. The only Coalition that matters. Um, but anyway, um, I want to get your guys' thoughts on this, and then there's a, a little wrinkle I want to add to this, which I find, kind of find very amusing. Uh, I yeah. see no issue with this shit. People bitching about nothing. You yes, want the, the high quality 4K? This is it. A lot of games come in this. I remember last Halo. Remember it was like you had the Blu-ray ready and you had the size, and then it said you still had to install like 60 gigs on top of that this is just the way it is anybody who doesn't think so just go right click on your game that's installed and take a look because all the updates and shit that come after it all adds up all the dlc it all adds up there's a lot of games that we all have that are over that yeah what call of duty is like over 100 isn't it yeah Yeah, call of duty is over 100 i thought it was like 138 close to 140 yeah call of duty yeah Uh, what was it it was 120 130 for gta 5 once they added the online, it went, boop, it ballooned up. You know, it's just, it's expected. And if you want those 4K graphics, you know, and you want all that content, all that content takes space. I'm surprised. But Adam, I want all the graphics with uh, only a couple megs of downloaded storage. Oh, you want it compressed? Oh, okay. Get the Switch version then. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh by I'm the way, to, oh, go ahead, like, go ahead. 
why not just press one disc and just download the rest? That's what everyone else does. I think they're trying to help people out because some people bitch about the, the size. They don't have the, the data caps and stuff like that. So they're yeah. like, hey, if it's uh, going to be this big of a file, then you know what? Here's, here's a disc. No bitching. Because look what happened with the Call of Duty. If, from what they were saying, I had the digital, but I heard a lot of people saying that it's unplayable unless you go online to get that patch. It just yeah. won't work. That's it requires it. All right. We're already getting some interesting um questions slash comments here um roach smoke says i thought a blu-ray was impossible to fill up no it's very possible no, it's a limit it's 25 only, gigs. it's only 50 50 gigs 50 yeah. gigs well isn't it 25 regular layer 50 d dual layer I, I believe it was like that 50, isn't it? For, yeah. Yeah. 50, 50 for dual layer 50 Freaking for dual, yeah. almost like almost filled up that blu-ray last gen yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but that's a different story. Like he didn't compress the video and audio. So. Yeah, that is. Well, yeah, but I mean, that is just to yeah. say that it's not unlimited, unlimited size or yeah. whatever. I don't. No. No, oh, yeah. There's no physical media that's unlimited. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, and there, there'll always be somebody that can fill it up. That's what she said. So it's always, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's always gonna space is always gonna be that cat and mouse and be like, damn, I got these three, four terabytes. Well, then great, they have that. Then we can make these games even bigger. It's just what happens. We see it a lot with phones. You know, yeah. it's like, oh man, why am I always running out of space? I don't have that many apps. Look at the size of these apps; they're no longer small like they used to be. They're in the games. Yeah, Shin Gok says, "Why is it slightly bigger on the Xbox though? Is that is that because it's true 4K on there?" Oh, that's a good question. Slightly bigger, oh, no, slightly, slightly slightly bigger wouldn't mean that it's it wouldn't go for true 4K. It would be like tremendously bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ro Roach Smoke says it's because they got more grass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tree. Yeah, I, I say just want to do what um kind of did with MGS five and then just give like a code like in the physical copy. Yeah. Yeah. How about just have a long loading screen with um you know one of the guys smoking, you know? Smoking yeah. <laughs> for each chapter. Yeah. So anyway, th this is the reason I want to bring this up. It's kind of funny because um Jack move, I got to call you out, brother, even though you're my dude. So he goes, am I going to have to keep swapping discs back and forth to play this game? I'm like, no, Wait, man. Yo, you just what, what era is this? <laughs> yeah, he was like, I don't want to go back to the PS1 era. That's era? what he thought. He was like, <laughs> like, am I going back to yeah. the PS2 era with the PS1 era swapping discs? Like, no, no you, you take both discs, you install both of them, and then you play it off. I'm assuming the first disc. It's going to be the first disc because they need, yeah. you, you know why you have to have a disc in there. It's yeah, not just, the, the, just to verify the check. That's yeah, it. it's just to verify it. exactly. Yeah. So because if you didn't, I just need to bring this up because if you didn't, to say for example, right, Manny lets me borrow of Gravity Rush Two, right? He brings me a game, I install it on my shit. Hey, that's it. I can just play it for see? free now. So we that's could have, we check. could have had it the other way if people stopped hating on Microsoft because that's what they were advertising. They were like, hey, yeah, it has to check every week or two, you know, the, your games, but you won't need the disc. Is that, it was ever twenty four hours, by the way. You know, 20, fuck it, then do it. 24 hours. <laughs> I don't even care if it says every 10 minutes. If I don't need any disc, come on. Now. Every 10 minutes, like weather on the ones, man. <laughs> there we go. Weather on the ones. Go ahead. Ping it. So, There's plenty of other things that we have that do that right now. So does, um, and I think this is a pretty obvious answer, but do you think that, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 Online is in one of these discs? That's what I think. I think Red Dead Online is there. That, otherwise, why the fuck is it so big? You know? Yeah, I think the shit's there. already in there. You know? Yeah, it's all, it is there. All it is, is all, all it is is that they're 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 adjusting the, it's the servers. Parts. It's yeah. the servers. It's the back end stuff that they're trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. But that, Red Dead Online the content is in there. Yeah, that world is in there. Like, yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah that, that world has been created. Yeah. By the way, and Adam, you brought this up before the show, and it's true. It's like people are bitching about the file size. GTA Five is like what 160 yeah. gigs right now. It's you know, ridiculous. Yeah, with all the content that keeps adding on, all these expansions and stuff that you're like, oh, well, I didn't pay for it. Yeah, no, it's in there, but you're downloading it. It's all in there. It's just huge. Yeah, it is huge. But it is so, interesting that this game does come on potentially. We don't know yet. Potentially comes on two discs. That's how massive it is. You know. You know, but I'm sure for some people that's a godsend because then they'll be like, damn, all right, so I don't have to worry about going home and doing this large install after the fact. You know, some or, people or, don't have that option. Uh, yeah, or going home, home and, and, yeah, yeah, clogging up the internet. No one yeah. can watch Netflix. No one can watch their novellas. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yo, by the way, preloading starts uh, today. It starts today. So there you go, there man. Go. There we go. Yeah. So I guess that it has gone gold then. 
Well, no, go, going gold means physical. You know, preloading is a different story. You don't need a disc for that. You know. No, but you need you need the game to preload it. No, you don't. Yeah, what do you preload then? They're preloading the game from uh, yeah, the but servers. the disc yeah, but the game isn't printed on a disc yet. Understand? Well, just going gold doesn't no, like no. it. Just means the game is ready to. No, it's to not. Ship. Going gold literally means it is on disc. That's what going gold means. That's what uh, it's always meant, dude. Well, no, it, going I mean, gold, going gold now is to is did a, they change is a it? bit of a different situation. Yeah, did they change the definition? It, it, this means that they they specifically sent the uh sent the, the final completed game to the company to you know distribution. to for distribution whether it is online or it is on the disc interesting yeah because mm -hmm. i'm going by the old school standard going gold means it's on a no, fucking yeah. disc ready to no, print you know, you know? That, that this is the, the gold usually means that is the moment that they submitted they stopped development and they've you know sent it to you know to you know for distribution as far as um, you know, to be printed into discs or to be made into files to be downloaded. Well, Carlos, there you go. There's your answer. The game won gold. Right. Then, so, you know. so if you if you remember, like not long ago, uh, you know, the guys who were doing the the uh, Spiral Collection, right? If you remember, they, there was one um, version of the game, like the third Spiral game, that was the second and third Spiral game are not weren't weren't going to be on the disc because they felt that they couldn't re reach the release date for the final game. So there was a, just a download part portion of it that you would stick you stick the game in and it would download the rest of it from the internet. Yeah. Because they couldn't finish it. And then it delayed the game so I'm They guessing, delayed the yeah. game so that they could put everything on there. Yeah. All right, so the game's gone gold even though you, why haven't I seen any news stories about this? Very interesting. Yeah, that's why that's no why I keep asking these questions about the the game. Yeah. There's some shady shit going on, man. Yo, man, fuck Rockstar. Here's the, it should be working 200 hours, man. Right? Yeah. Here's, the, here, here's the thing, like, you're the, Yeah, they slacking, man. 200 hours in a week. Is that, do, do, are there even 200 hours in a week? Fuck. Yeah, probably oh, man. not. Anyway. Um, um, someone's yeah. asking, does what the up? PS4 have exclusive single-player content or multiplayer or both? I know there's an um, exclusivity deal of some sort, but I don't know what that entails. Holy crap. But there is a, is a, you know, the marketing. Like if you see the marketing, yeah. be PlayStation. But I don't know what, it, what if any, uh, you know, like exclusive they, shit they're gonna have. What are you talking about, I, man? I, I so I, I I turn on PS4. I want to see, right? Because Grand Theft Auto, I remember it was like 125 gigs. I just did a, a check. It says 71 gigs now. Yeah, this game's gonna suck. What's going on? That I remember that shit was huge. Well, uh, you know, the you know, it may just be counting the um, Wait, right, amount. Uh, of, they may just be counting the amount of, uh, of the actual game is GTA Five, right? Yeah, it's seventy gigs if you want to buy it. But you know, with yeah. the other shit, with the update, yes. no, that's what I'm. I have it installed with everything. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm looking at no, maybe. What about yeah, Witcher? Here, Witcher Three was also a hundred gigs. I don't here, know. Same thing. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> you motherfuckers both... checking. Those situations may be, it may be that there it's only really counting the amount the, that you actually install for the initial install. It's not counting any of the the the, the patches or um, DLC. No, did you go to the storage? Um, I'm looking. Yeah. All right. Let me. I'm looking at the. All right. So let me go into the other way storage because then I just looked at, uh, for example, um, Black Ops Three, right? And that has all the DLC. That's ninety gigs. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's showing that. So let me let me go to rather system storage and see the applications. God damn it! Why did I delete this fucking game? Uh -oh. Could have used that shit. You. I told you. Damn, Doom! Doom is almost eighty gigs. Yeah, GTA is over hundred, man. Yeah, it is over hundred. You know, with all the uh, add-ons and shit. Let me see. Let me see. Black yeah. Ops Three is seventy-one gigs. Damn. Monster Hunter World is 18. God damn, what they're the fucking the efficient. My Black Ops 3 is 89. What the hell, man? Well, you probably have like DLC and like skin packs. Yeah, you don't have the DLC stuff. So. Nah, fuck that. Oh, okay. <laughs> man, I'm against that. I'm principal. You don't, you don't got that one? I'm boycotting that shit. All right, so now look. All right, all, right, all right, my Doom. All right, now I'm in the storage. It's yeah, reflecting the same. Doom is 78 gigs. Yeah, so is mine. Okay, see, so let me see. What are we trying to find again? GTA 5. Yeah, because I remember that was like over 100 gigs when they had all the other stuff. I'm like, yo, this I'll save that for the show. 
Yeah, right. Obviously, I'm going to move on because now we're just waiting around <laughs> for nonsense. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, speaking about Call of Duty, let's talk about Black Ops 4 breaking digital sales records. <laughs> um, very interesting stuff. So, actually, um, let, let me bring this up here because Torrance showed me this thing because I was wondering um, is Mr. Davis? Mr. Dave, by the way, yeah, he's, he's our avatar there. Um, I was <laughs> wondering if possibly Call of Duty was going to get um, hurt by like games like Fortnite or whatever who have similar modes. Looks like it hasn't. You know, the game, check this out. This is interesting. So Black Ops 4, in the first three days, I'm going to list all of these now. In the first four, three days, Black Ops 4 sold $500 million, um, it, you know, in terms of money, right? Um, World War II, which was last year's game, also sold $500 uh, million. Black Ops 3, $550 million. Black Ops 2, $500 million in one day. Um, Modern Warfare 3, $400 million in one day. $775 million in five days. Damn! That's a beast right there. Um, Black Ops, three hundred sixty million in one day, six hundred fifty million in five days, um, three hundred million for Modern Warfare two in one day, five hundred million. So it looks like Black Ops four. Okay, it's, it's interesting. Black Ops four did not break records as far as those other games are concerned, but it did break digital sales records. So my um, theory is that the reason that's happening, because remember, it, it's kind of like a seesaw. The digital sales are up, physical is down. So I'm guessing that the the digital is what's taken over this time. What do you guys say about that? We'll see. I don't think so. I don't think that's the issue. This is a crowded game market right now. So we'll see if it holds up. If it starts dropping from this point, then we know it was just, you know, it's Call of Duty hype. There's a lot of people that just get Call of Duty because that's what they do every year. So they're like, yeah, I'm going to get it. But a lot of people we've seen it online are kind of bitter that there really is no story. It's like, it's just multiplayer, multiplayer, and playing with bots. And they're like, well, this is, it feels empty. So we'll see because we saw that other, I, well, I am talked about it, the battlefield one ea just sent out an email to a lot of people check your email that all their dlc is free for that one they're trying to get into it because you know the new one's going to come and that one will have the campaign stuff that one will have battle royale and multiplayer and all that dlc all free you know no season pass needed like with the black ops so i, I don't think the numbers are going to keep going up i think they they just peaked this was it yeah, we'll see about that because it's interesting. The, the reaction that I'm mostly seeing from about this game is like extremely uh, positive. Like a lot of, of Twitch course. streamers and all that, you know, they're loving. Basically, the the one thing I keep hearing a lot is like people like, "Hey, this is a, this is PUBG without the jank." That's what yeah, I wanted. That's exactly. what you're saying. Yeah, but there's nothing to compare it to because on this level, Battlefield is what we're gonna have to compare it to. And if they play their cards right and they just market it, the fact that they have all that other shit for free, you know, coming with it then that's a competition. Right now, you can't compare PUBG to, to Call of Duty. Call of Duty is going to kill everything that's out there. And then Fortnite, that's a different style altogether. You know, that's more cartoony. So it, they're, they're right now, they're going to dominate for, what, a few more weeks? Because then you got a Red Dead that's going to come out. That's going to take time away. A lot of people are going to go and buy that game and play that game. So regardless, and then when Battlefield comes, we'll really see. If Battlefield flops, then yeah, then it's Call of Duty to win. But if it doesn't, and people want more bang for their buck. They get more bang for their buck in Battlefield. Yeah, the the thing that I find interesting, I joked about this on Twitter, but I'm all, I was also kind of a little bit serious about it too. <laughs> I think if this Black Ops game does as well as it's doing right now, um, Activision is not going to have any single sort of incentive to put single player back in. Why should they? They can make more money without um, you know, yeah, buying actors you know, and all it, that. It's you know? a simple, simple reason because you got three studios. You can't have all three studios just doing Battle Royale. They that easily, like, if it makes the yeah, money, you know, how, you know how these how nah, these studios get. Nah, if it makes well, the money, they're going to do it. You know it, that. It's, it's not going to, it's just a mode. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. They, they this mode is the biggest this thing this one, year, dude. <laughs> what the fuck are yeah, you talking but about? It's this year. You can't just say, remember, this game's going to development two, three years. The other one is almost done. You yeah. can't say, oh, you know what? Cancel it now. So Forget so it. let's let's make a bet. Oh, want to make a bet? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So here's here's a bet. Some someone has to bet for the next Call of Duty having a battle royale mode and someone against. So Adam, who, you, I think you, no. I think it, the battle royale mode will be there, just like horde mode. I think it'll just be another mode. I don't think it's going to be the focal point. <laughs> Isn't that point. what the it is right one, now? But that's what it is no, now. Right yeah. now, right now, it is the focal point. There is no campaign. The next one is what I'm saying. Will have a campaign. Oh, okay. So we'll have a story. 
Yeah. yeah I'm not going to go that far. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Not going to be the focal point. If they're smart about it, and this is the main issue that everybody was saying, even people that are all loving this game, is that this series, and they might as well just change the name and just call it, like, Call of Duty multiplayer or Call of Duty and give it a year number and just make it their multiplayer one. Because you got three games that are all doing stories, and obviously this story is done. The Black Ops story is done. It was done in Black Ops 2. Black Ops 3 was bananas. It was all over the place. Yeah, if but you Adam, you know, story, you, couldn't. you know, and this is an anecdotal, obviously, because to be honest, the only person I'm hearing that's complaining about the lack of story is you. I haven't heard anybody complain about it. Are you kidding me? There's tons of people. I sent you reports of people who complain yeah. about that shit. I wow. haven't bought the yeah. game because it didn't I, I've heard story. people complaining about like, oh, this is just Battle Royale. This is the, the multiplayer is weak. I've heard those complaints. The only complaint I have not heard is the lack of story. And that's mostly because those, I know plenty of people. Yeah. We talked about it before. How okay. it divided yeah. Because people were like, damn, yeah. I like the, the Michael Bay experience. And that's gone. Yeah, no. So but the, like, the vision I saw many... was like, you know, basically it's like, OK, guys, I wanted the true Call of Duty multiplayer experience and then the Battle Royale guys, you know. That that's the division I saw, you know. I, I didn't even see with the battle royale guys because battle royale guys are cheap. They're cheap. They, they, okay. they, they used to play in free games and thirty dollars games. This is a sixty dollars game. That's what I'm saying. Think about there's millions of what ten some ridiculous millions of people playing battle royale. And I remember they did a, a number account and they were like a large majority of them are playing them on mobile devices. They're playing on their phones because it's a free download. Yeah, but my point you know? is, if this bat, if these companies smell money with this battle royale shit, they're gonna milk it until oh, yeah, it's dead. They can smell money, but I don't see this being the dominant for all three series. Battle Royale is not gonna be the dominant for Call of Duty, for all three brands. That's no, no. The other ones are gonna do story, or they're gonna try to change up. There's definitely gonna be a story in the next one. That's for sure. You heard 100 percent sure about that. They they've been doing it over a year now. You can't What's, tell them with all the money they already put in their story. It's like, yeah, you're done. Cancel it. How do you know they're well, working mean, on I it? I mean, though? but the but Blops Four has was like started even before that one. Yeah, and it was going to have a they, story, and they oh, got but rid it of was, it. It was it was shit. We don't they know that. Had, <laughs> we know <laughs> that. Oh my god! They said the report that everything that 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 got leaked out came to pass. Think about it. Everything that came out is like, oh, guess what? Their story is falling apart. They're not going to do it. They're going to now work with uh, Raven and focus on just doing a battle royale, which was supposed to be DLC for next year. And everyone's like, no, that's never going to happen. It's Call of Duty. It's all about story. And next, you know, they did their big show and they revealed the battle royale and all the maps. And oh yeah, by the way, no campaign this year. Peace out. And they what's left. the next game coming out? Next year, that most yeah. likely will probably be for uh, either the next console. That's the, the big rumor. But yeah, next year, because every uh -huh. year there's another one. But no, I know, but like, wh like who was it? Treyarch? Oh um, no, no, not this Treyarch. Is, I'm a fucking. Ah, uh... oh, fuck. it's not a. It's not Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward, because uh, what's his name? Sledgehammer just did uh, the what you call it one. They just did World War Two. World War Two, and then uh, yeah. Treyarch made yeah. Ops Four. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. I don't. I don't. We'll see. I. I. I don't see why call it. Um. Activision would put a uh, campaign in these games anymore. Yeah. That's the. Uh, that, my thinking is like. You know. My. My. My reasoning is like. You know. Adam. I know you, you're the exception, and you know your friends too. But most of the people I see, they don't even give a fuck on, about the. I, the, the I, yeah, SP, I, 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 I mean, here's the thing. I. Th I do think he does have a point because they're already working on the the next game already. So just to turn it all off. At that point in How time. How do we know they even turned it on to begin with? Because we're, we're speculating. We're speculating it, it, dude, it takes <laughs> about five years to develop a fucking game. Not a Call of oh, Duty no, game. Not, not a Call no, of Duty no, game. What do you, it, yes, takes, it, it takes them two years no, no, to no. make those games, dude. No, no, no. Because you got to, it's like, oh, yes, it's two years. It's, it's a little bit more than that. But the thing is that it always looks like it's faster because they have so many studios jumping on, on back of each other. Well, no, they, 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 they release a game every three years consistently. And they've done like, so yeah, so, it takes about three. It's so, so but like this okay, one was being worked on. Then what happened with the story? Then the, well, this one was were being worked on because it, the, it, was, it was having issues. It that was also a la, it out. was also a last minute thing, too. If you remember, we were we were we heard this in the su in the summer, they were already getting close to, to closing out that one, yeah, you know, as far as the time frame goes. So Here's the thing, like I'm thinking, yes, for maybe the next one it'll might might have the storyline because they were also developing it before these guys. So I think it'll be the same, it'll be business as usual the next one because they've already been they already developed that stuff. They mm. didn't have those crazy faux pas as far as the thing goes. And not only that, 
the way they announced it that all three were supposed to be different it's all in the call of duty universe but they were all supposed to be different black ops was supposed to be what it was before was this is the squad base this is four player co-op you know you're mm-hmm. going in all these different, and that's what this one was about then you had the other ones and they would did more period pieces and so we had with the world war ii you know and then we have the next one which was uh, the infinity war which was doing the future war you know, mm-hmm. and that, so they're they have to stay different in that way. If you start just making the focal point for all three of them battle royales, then they're all the same. Here, here's the thing. The, here's the thing that this the, the, what will ha- probably happen is that this Call of Duty, you know, the the what is this one called? This one, Black Ops Four. This one's called Black Ops Four. This may end up being being the one that's the more multi uh, player of yeah, player focus. That's, that's, yeah, that's also no true. one. Yeah, no one does a better like the way, job. Oh, go ahead. No one does a better job at homogenizing their own franchises like Activision. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and and if this is a trend that that is positive for them, the Black Ops Four. Because this is still kind of an experiment. Because it's like we we still work. haven't even seen that microtransactions. You know yet. what? You come? know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on the on the story. Um, and this is why, right? Because remember when when Modern Warfare came out, right? They were working on the the Pacific game or whatever the fuck it was called, mm-hmm. right? So basically, they saw that the Modern Warfare um thing worked, and after the World War II game came out, you didn't have any more World War II games for a while. So I think since they're already working on the story, next year's is gonna have. Um, a story, but and this is th- this is the hypothetical part. If this game does really well, the Call of Duty after that will not have a story because they no here's, longer need to have them anymore. But you know what it means by doing really here, well. But here's the other here's the other thing that they might be setting up for this. This this might be setting up for them in the long run that they have this uh, Black Ops Call of Duty running simultaneously with the other Call of Duty game out. That's a possibility now. That they continue to keep updating the game all the way up until you know, even up into until after the next one, and still have people buying microtransactions and shit after that. And that's the thing that we're waiting for. That's when we'll know. Because right now, there's nothing. You don't get any of those options. There's no mm-hmm. cosmetic stuff like that. None of that stuff has happened yet. That's coming. They're they're supposedly going to be doing like a battle pass type of thing. I think I'm thinking pass. that's that might be a possibility for them because. Nowadays, it's not the money is not in just making a one and done video game. Yep. It's keeping people connected and yeah. continuously buying shit for games, the game. Games as a service, that, man. Yeah, exactly. that will be the thing. Now, the the main issue with this and makes it different than Fortnite is Fortnite. You're in third person, so you can see your character. So it actually makes more sense to do all the customization. This one's first person, you know, so you're only really seeing the customization of the gun. And yeah, you could do the emotes, you can get some of those dancings, but then now people are exploiting that because they'll do a dance or do something so that way they can see behind a wall to see who's there because the camera pulls out. You know, so then that's gonna have to get cracked down on. Yeah, and so they're gonna have to come up with some other ops, but that's when it it'll really make or break the sales for this to see if people start buying into all of that stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If this game sells really well, but Activision but like has said, no reason to have these, um, you know, waste don't their time have with that, that shit. Much, they don't have a large window to dominate like that. That's my, what I'm saying. You got Red Dead that's coming out. You got the Battlefield that's coming out. You got some other games that are coming out before the end of this year. It, this market is very crowded. It's a crowded time to introduce something yeah, like this. Yeah, this time, but what about early next year? Think about like, Fortnite it came may, out. If it, they, well, well, listen, listen, listen. Fortnite came out last year. It really blew up this year. You know, it started blowing Fortnite, up last yeah, year. Yeah, but Fortnite you know? didn't like, have the Battle yeah. Royale mode. Fortnite came no, no, out and when, it was when, just a when, game. No, no, when Fortnite, I'm talking about the, specifically the Battle Royale mode. When that Battle Royale mode came out, it was like end of last year, right? And this year it's when the game really blew up. So who is to say that, yeah, Call of Duty coming out now with the crowded market may not even be a factor if it starts blowing up early next year or middle of next year. You know what I'm it's saying? The same thing with PUBG. PUBG. Fortnite. Yeah. You know, they dominated. That's what I'm saying. It's all the VGX's game. Next of- one. It just keeps trickling down. And what's the next one? Battlefield is. And that one will be free with all its content and have all the modes. If those modes are on par quality wise, we've seen those trailers. Trailers look awesome. If the gameplay is on par with that, people are going to be like, damn, let me go for that. I'm going to jump on that then. 
we'll see about that i don't i don't think a lot because call of duty guys seem to have like a hatred for battlefield which is interesting yeah. and, and then i and, and for, just from my experience call of duty is um it's a simpler game to play it's more arcade based kind of compared to battlefield i'm not saying battlefield is a sim game it just feels more realistic than call of duty, call of duty has that pick up and play kind of thing battlefield you got to put more work into it i think that's why it's not as popular as um you know it's the thinking man's game more or less it's not more, as accessible yeah it's not as accessible exactly exactly yeah. so it, it yeah. all comes down to what their their gameplay looks like in the story and i know they're gonna advertise that and then also with their battle royale if it's just a uh, german cornfields like what we got in black ops then uh yeah it's gonna be boring but hopefully it looks better that's it I'm just looking yeah. for something. Tash Shing Shing Gok says he used to love both Call of Duty and Battlefield. Now he hates both of them. Damn. Nice. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Uh, moving on. What the fuck? Are we? Oh, yeah. Okay. This might get a little controversial. All right. So you guys remember when Far Cry 5 came out? Call it, um, Ubisoft got a lot of heat because they, you know, P these journalists were saying, oh, you guys weren't, um, you weren't taking a stance. You know, you, know, you, you were toying with politics but you didn't really go deep you know dive into it um so they actually made a statement about this and they said something that should not be a radical statement but it is i guess in this day and age they said that being overly political is bad for business and my response is no fucking shit you know it's like of course it's bad for business people don't want that they just want video games well you yeah. know it's like that and everything the thing, and the thing, the thing it's thing, like that with everything exactly yeah. people don't want to hear thing, all that the thing about entertainment it's it shouldn't be it shouldn't they shouldn't be closing the door on 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 other on, on everybody uh, entertainment is something that everybody can enjoy so if you start closing doors like that then you close yourself out of sales and that's what i think that they were trying to go for there were there were being uh they're they were taking a light hand with it because they didn't want to get oh you know get too much into it granted it did look like that sort of stuff right you know look like it was taking you know sorts of shots at you know certain types of folks but i th definitely think yeah they're they're gonna be light-handed like kind of like a lot of um uh, you know media out there where it's like you know, movies tend to be very light-handed. You know, when it comes to certain things, because they you know, they want everybody to go in there, no matter what. Yeah, they also said that you know they're not saying that they want to get rid rid of like political tones or whatever. They just don't want to be heavy-handed about it. And they, ironically, if they used um Avatar as an example, James Cameron movie, it's like mm -hmm. yeah, that game, the, the movie has a message about you know us like destroying the environment, but it, it didn't go hey go vote for Hillary or something like that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like as in your face. They said that, that's had, what they're trying to a, do. It had a, a message, a universal message that everybody could could agree with. Yeah. You know? And and you know because people brought up the divisions like is that game political? Like they even said that oh. they, they, they said the game's a fantasy. That's what they yeah, said. And, and it's it. about a virus that's spreading and stuff. And they yeah. don't even talk about a government. Who's running the country? No one freaking knows. They don't talk. About a virus that spreads across America. That's yeah. orange with weird hair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. You know, um, but yeah, even around with yeah, time. but but to me, I, I you know, and I saw some you know journalists go, you know getting mad at Ubisoft over the, over their statements. I'm like, it's just bad for business. You don't want to alienate anybody. Leave politics out of entertainment, man. You know. Well, I mean, the thing is that like usually when it comes to to, to political, actually, statements, actually, I should I should say leave political propaganda out of entertainment. Politics, I think politics, you could have in entertainment. It's politics, just how you how you shape it. You know. Here's the thing: like politics do eventually. You know, there are things that. Eventually Eventually, do make it into these things, whether the artists or people do not mean it to do it or purposely do it. I mean, X Men was obviously very poignant at the yes. time. That was a very, it's a, a was a political it was it, it was political, but it was also very light handed at the same time. It shows these it shows a, a way of showing these sorts of things in a way that can be acceptable for everybody. So obviously, you can read. If you if you are really reading into X Men, you'd be like, "Holy crap, that is an allegory for the civil rights movement." But at the same time, a person who may not be you know looking at that stuff would be like, "Hey, this is a cool story about people blasting each other with energy forces." Dude, that's, right? that's the beauty people of it. Always see what yeah. they want in anything. Well, no, like like exactly what May said. Like, but I want to I want to jump off that. That's the beauty of a well written story is that somebody. It, it, it takes the theme or idea of something, breaks it down into its components, and then makes those digestible. So even if you're not an environmentalist and you go and watch Avatar, 
you're like, oh, okay, well, I, I, I can totally see with that. And then, then you kind of make the connection, like, oh, that's like environmental. If you actually want to get people of different opinions to see things from a different point of view, you have to. It's it's mandatory to have a light hand. You're not going to show somebody the light of day by beating them over the head with a message. You you have to break it down into something like like X Men. Like a lot of people loved X Men, and some people then went later and were like, oh yeah, I guess it is an allegory to the civil rights. Like I never really thought about that. I I'm, I'm definitely with the mutants, so maybe I should like some people actually rethink their viewpoint if you get them to if you sugarcoat the pill enough to get them to swallow it before they really start to think about it. And that's and that's what you that's the, that's the stance that Ubisoft is taking. They're like, okay, we're making a product that everybody doesn't matter who can pick up this thing. And yes, they can read a little bit of this. Uh, uh, you know, there are similarities between our world and this world that we're presenting. Also, you know, you could just not even think about that stuff and just blow the hell out of everything, you know? Yeah, I want to quickly address this. Uh, GZDR says the, the Supreme Court ruled that corporations are people and can get into politics. Here's the thing. I, we, you know, just to, don't get it conflated. We are not saying that um, these companies shouldn't get political if they no. want. No, if they want to, go ahead. I'm, I'm just saying be prepared that half the people may not buy your product. That's all I'm saying. Just like um, it, since we're talking about politics, I'm going to throw it in there. There was that story about the um, that store owner that didn't want to buy. He didn't want to bake the cake for the gay guy. Right. My thing is like, OK, yeah, if you don't want to bake the cake from don't, you don't have to do it, but I'll be prepared that you're going to lose fucking business. So exactly. that, that's all I'm saying, right. you know. That's it. So, yeah. It's like, well, yeah. Remember yeah. Walmart did that with a cake with uh, someone wanted to name their, their, their son named Hitler and they wanted that happy Hitler birthday cake and they refused to do it. Yeah. So he, here's the here's the thing. Like obviously, yes. You Did know, you get the cake made, Adam? No. no. <laughs> so uh, see the thing. I said that in private calls. The thing, but, the uh, thing is, that, yes, a business, <laughs> a business, a business who sells products can totally be about what's going on currently, and they could be totally very heavy handed and say, "Hey, yes, only you, this type of person, can buy this sort of thing." But at the same time, they also are cutting themselves out of out of sales from from something else. Yeah. So that's why yeah. that's why movie most movies or video games they all choose a very light hand or a very allegorical hand when it comes to certain subjects that are very sensitive. Yeah, because you want to sell products to as many people as possible. He's like, okay, yeah, that guy is not going to sell cakes to gay people, but the guy right down the block sure as fuck is, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah. So yeah, that's just because how it is. because that because that guy made that this sort of distinction as to who and who who should and shouldn't buy his cakes. He's already cutting himself out of business. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the other guy down the, the 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 guy the other guy down the street says, "Who gives a shit? You're buying a fucking cake." Yeah. It's a, you know, and this is the way I, I I go out there, Manny. You two at try to figure out what me and Manny's politics are. You don't know because we don't fucking talk about them publicly. You know, no. I'm not trying to alienate people. I want people to, to be, read my to shit. Be, to be you know? to be honest, you know, what are the communists and we what, don't talk about them. what are the <laughs> to, to be honest, what are the things that unite us as pe as people as as people on on uh, you know who watch this show or all you know who play video games? What are those things that unite us? And that's the things that we like to concentrate on. The you know. Awesome video games, cool stuff in the you know in, in you know what's going on you know like what movies we saw. Those sorts of things are the things that unite us, not silly shit like politics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like it's like introducing ourselves as, hey, my name is this. I voted for this person. Yeah, it's, it's like, like whoa, slow your roll. I don't need to know all that shit. I mean, we know? we you know you know we're not going to mention our, our friend's name, but our, we have a friend that's just a hardcore Republican, right? There are po there are points that we that we totally disagree that I that that we or, or whatever totally disagree on, but his politics is not the reason why we are friends with why 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 I or we are friends with that guy. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't befriend anybody just purely because of their politics. That's just stupid. No. That you know, that's not that's not what people are about. You know, um, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't denounce anybody uh, for the most part purely because of their politics. Now, I I don't consider like rabidly like I don't consider Nazi a politic. That's not really that. politics. You're just a fucking asshole. You know, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like like if, if I've had plenty of friends who have different opinions than me, and, and the idea is that you can dis discuss them. 
civilly, or you don't discuss them. But mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I, I, remember, what they told you, remember what they told you, you growing up? All you do by building up? walls is yeah. make an enemy. Exactly. The first, remember what they the told first, you when you growing up? Don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion. It's Yeah, religion simple. and politics. Right. That's even when it comes to, without even when it comes to, like, you know, when you go get a job. Religion, yeah, politics. Religion, religion, politics, Batman be Superman. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you do. But apparently, apparently, also, uh, apparently, you know, also, whatever. It, it, that's the things that unite, and that's that's the thing that 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 brings those sorts of connections. Yes, you can have those connections through politics, but I feel like the real things is like I, if I can go to a mo- you know I can go to a movie with anybody. If we agree that this movie's good or bad or whatever, we're all good. You know, that's it. That's it, man. That's what it's all about. You know, you and know, it, 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 it is sad that Ubisoft caught flack for saying basic shit. You know, it's like yeah. really. You know, it's like, they're gonna catch flack for saying that. Yeah, yeah they, they did. Do. They caught fl- a lot of flack for saying that. Like, you know? what is people's position that they should? Yes, they should. Politics? Yes, yes. That's, that's just what... bad storytelling, though. I'm sorry that you're an idiot and can't understand <laughs> nuance, but that doesn't even mean you need to ruin it for the rest of us. Yeah, we. You know, the thing is, again, like you know, you keep you keep a you know you let you let your viewers. If you let you, you know, if you want your viewers to go a little bit deeper, yeah, you put those sorts of things in sort of the game, you know, you know, or or you know, just keep it, keep it a, a lighter hand. You don't need to smack everybody in the face with these things. Everybody knows good and damn well what they're trying to say. Well, no, but that, uh, that this is where I'm getting pissy and heated about it. Like mm-hmm. that's the exact point of the people who are are decrying this. They they don't care that you want to sit down and enjoy a video game without politics. They want to intrude upon you and force their politics into your face to force you to agree with them. We're not even talking about like live and let live. The people who are upset about this kind of shit are upset because their ideology isn't being shoved down my throat. And but, I personally have a problem with that. But the thing is, you know, and, and it's it's funny because like, okay, if you don't like this thing because it's not – pushing you know whatever forward right then why are you even complaining if you're if you're if you're a uh you know if you're a consumer right you wouldn't buy something that doesn't you know that you know that you don't that doesn't represent certain things right like if if, if something is totally well, because they'll buy it they, they, they want they want other they want other people to be forced to basically be in they want they want a propaganda to be other people to be forced to watch propaganda that they agree with and I don't, I don't care what your belief system is. That's a weird, fucked up position to be coming from. I mean, you, you should, should be, be parroting my politics because I want people who disagree with me to be forced to sit through them. Mm-hmm. But, but like you said, that's not even good entertainment. Like, for example, if I'm if I'm watching a movie, playing a game, that's but they don't know, care. Talk- that's the thing. They don't care about good. That's what I just realized. No, no you're they right. Don't they care don't care about good entertainment. It's basically like this, Tony. Like, if I'm like, I'm against kicking babies. And you're like, well, yeah, bro, I am too. I don't care. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to make put an entire anti-kicking baby segment in your video game. And you're like, I, I really don't care about this. I just want to play my video game. I'm like, I don't care if you want to play your video game. You're going to sit through this anti-baby kicking thing and learn about why you shouldn't kick babies, you fucking scuzzy gamer. Like, that seems the, the position that they're coming. And somebody tell me if I'm off base here, but it seems like this isn't. This isn't even about them not being political enough. This is about them not directly injecting the politics that certain people agree with in the face of opposers. Well, that goes to the point I was going to make. It's like if I'm going to have even a product that's like throwing in my face politics, I agree with. I'm like, I don't want to see that. I don't care if I agree. I do not want to see that. Yeah. I like like Brett, like, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the baby king thing. It's like, yes, I agree. Baby should not be kicked. I don't need to see a whole fucking movie about it. I already agree. I'm already on board. You don't need to convert I also, me. I also you know? think that some show me some mess- fucking aliens. That's what I want to see. He blowing up a city. Yeah, but you know? they're they're, also, they're saying that there are some. Though, their response is, well, there are some people out there who do like kicking babies, and they're the ones that they have. They're not going to change their this. minds for a fu- with a fucking movie. Unless, if you're being heavy handed, they're not going to change their minds. They're not going to change think, their I, minds. I, I think you know? Yeah, you know. Again, it's like you keep. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you keep hammering you over the head with that shit, they're not going to change their minds on purpose to be belligerent. You know, that's just how people are. You know, people don't like being told what to do. You know. You have to, yeah, like, I like mean, you said, you got to do it very slyly, like with the X Men. Like, think about it. You could be a hardcore fucking racist asshole, right? But you're like, oh, I love mutants, and then one day it'll click in your head. Oh shit! Well, no, but I'm okay, one of these motherfuckers let, let, discriminating. Let me flip this on its head. Yeah. They're not putting enough conservative Christian values in video games today. Am I saying that because uh, uh, if I say that, am I saying that because I'm playing video games and I want to see more conservative Christian values in the games that I play? 
No. The people who always say this shit are 50 year old evangelical motherfuckers who don't play video games. <laughs> they want they want Jesus not injected into their video games. They want Jesus injected into your, your video, video games. games. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. To and you. that's the point of view that, that I'm I'm seeing here. And that's where I get upset. Like you don't inject your point of view into somebody else's entertainment forcefully. You just don't do that. That's that's indoctrination, pure and simple. Yeah, this is and a whole other you, top. Yo, go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead. If you what? Oh, if you're arguing for that, which seems what a lot of people are, then fuck you. Yeah, um, GZDR. I don't know. He says um, being neutral when bad stuff is happening around you and you don't address it makes you complicit. I don't agree with that. Here, here's the here's the other thing though. What is entertainment? Entertainment is escape from the world that is around you. Exactly. Now everybody, to to some extent, needs some sort of escape. Why the hell do you play video games or watch movies or go to the theater? If you're going to be reminded about the world around you every single second of every single day, that's going to get really crazy and tiring, and you're going to be even more worse off than you were before. Yeah, you're going to be miserable. This stuff obviously it, like, exists for a reason. Obviously, you you will be sensitive. Obviously, the content that's being created is, is sensitive to what is currently going on at this point in time, and that is fine. But at the same time, you have to do also realize that this stuff is entertainment, and not everybody wants to be smacked in the head about what's going on in fucking politics right now. Seriously. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it, it gets you, so yeah, tiring. You can't, you can't draw allegories, and this is the thing: you can't draw allegories without being intrusive. Like, okay, exactly. so yeah. if you don't like the alt right, for instance, let's take it a, a step beyond that. Like, what don't you like? Do they have an authoritarian uh, regime that you you don't like their methods? Do you not like the way that they they impress their ideas forcefully upon other people? I'm not even saying this is real criticism. I'm just saying take those things and put them on an imaginary group of antagonists. Make these imaginary antagonists mirror the basic thematics and ideas without having to have every single thing the same. Because if you just make a video game where you run around punching alt-right people, the only play people that are going to play it are super liberal left people. But if you bring it like – like yes, everybody can shoot is fucking that Nazis. Thing? Yes, that, that's basically what Wolfenstein is. Like, okay, everybody have fun shooting Nazis. Like, I get it. It's self-congratulatory. But, like, if you want to get into the nuance of actually why Nazis were bad and why Hitler was bad, then you need to look into authoritarianism. You need to look into um, propaganda. You need to look into the political climate. Like, you could actually teach people why Nazis are really bad by making a, 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 a dystopian future – uh, uh, you know, uh, authoritarian world kind of thing, and you could actually man in the high castle. Exactly, exactly. Uh, don't don't spoil don't don't spoil it. No, 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 no. I mean, you can teach people about these ideas. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't you know told, that was yeah, a you, real yeah, song. You, I thought that I did that for the show. Yeah, you could, you so, could, yeah, you could teach people about this stuff without beating them over the head. You know, yeah, and, exactly. and so, you so create it about it. I mean, about obviously, it isn't being complacent. It's actually trying to be more active than the people who are just doing a bad job of it. Yeah, and obviously, we're not saying that there isn't a place for 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 um, you know, for content to really want to tell these. Yes, sorts of there stories. totally there is a place is, for that. There yeah. obviously is a stage for that because that is what it is. But you also have to understand that also serving it in a way that gives give, that allows people who of of any kind. You know, who, of, of of any belief or any of to be able to go in and be like, "Oh, I see what's wrong with this," you know, and also enjoy it at the same time. They don't need to also de- delve deeper. They, again, it's a we're talking about a game where you shoot the shit out of out of thousands and thousands of people. <laughs> you know, is yeah. is there some there's something definitely wrong with that? But at the same time, it's just, it's just also it's, it's various. It's also a very escapist sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, right. well, like, yeah. let me give let me give a good example before we die out. Yeah. How mm-hmm. many people here played The Last of Us? We all did. Yeah, we all yeah, we did. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, the Why idea of The Last... Yeah, Brian played it too, man. Oh, yeah. shit. So, yeah. the idea of The Last of Us, <laughs> at the end of the story, is that... Did anybody here really want to let Ellie die? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, Brian that game, did. <laughs> <laughs> With the exception Where of Brian, mean? then. Great to uh, motherfuckers. Come on. I, I, no, I get figured it. they would come up with another solution. There had to have been another way. That's my see, life. But see, this thing, right now, the thing that we're talking about is utilitarianism. 
the greatest good for the greatest number of people. And the game does a very good job of showcasing why that is not necessarily always true. It taught people about the fundamental ideas of utilitarianism as a, a, a thought process and or, or as a, a collective group and why we should not be doing it. And it transferred those ideas seamlessly without slapping the word utilitarian across because at that point, most people check out, they're like, man, I don't care anymore. But it, it, it really brings up a, a classic philosophical conundrum of morality without having to be o- overt about it. In fact, I would say most people don't even realize that that was the, the, one of the main themes of the game. There are a lot of people out there who I'm sure do, but there are other people who are just like, oh, no, I didn't want to kill Ellie. Well, why not? Well, because you know, it was the best thing for the, the most amount of people. Well, yeah, well, fuck them. They don't know what's best. Like it, you, can, you can transfer a thought without it needing to be literal, man. That's the whole idea of fucking fiction. Otherwise, yeah. everything would be nonfiction. Exactly, exactly. I've heard some push about that too. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be reading fiction, but it needs to be nonfiction. I've actually heard that. It's insane. There's, there's, a, there's a time. There's a time and enough place. There for, is a time and place. You could, well, you could have both. You could have, you both, have both. You know, come you know, on. I mean, people. you know, I tend to read. I tend to read autobiographies, but also sometimes I'll read a you know a stupid comic book or 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 or, 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 or uh, you know a book, you know a fantasy book. I, mean, I, don't, Christ, actually, I don't think anyone should tell any what they should and shouldn't. Read. Yeah, that's exactly would, exactly. Would people rather Spider Man actually be a story about a guy going through puberty? Should should Superman literally be a story about a person socially isolated by having a singular advance rate? Like these are all templates that we build on to transfer ideas. They're boring and stupid if you make them literal. If you currently work at Marvel, the answer is yes. <laughs> and that's Man. the fucking problem with Marvel right now, is they don't realize that they can use the themes to tell a story instead of literally fucking telling you shit. Oh, God. We're not going to get into that. But, yeah, it's like, come on, just be creative. Just be creative, people. We've been doing it for hundreds of years. Why are we stopping now? You know? Oh, God. All right. Um, This is completely on another subject, but this is for the old school guys, man. All right. So you guys remember... um analog they, they've been coming out with these like really awesome like retro consoles that are like replic not really replic yeah they're kind of replicating the original um hardware in a sense it's called fpga um bunch of crazy shit but basically you could play your old games on these systems right they released a, a nintendo one they released a super nintendo one which i reviewed earlier this year and now the shit i really wanted man is coming the sega genesis one uh mm-hmm. so that's coming i don't i think it's coming out early next year so if you got your old school sega genesis cartridges this shit will play them it'll make them look a lot better than they used to look you know and if you look at the um, the, the at least the last one there's so much fidgeting you could do with it make it look crisp and shit play how you want and if you want you can just get one of those everdrive cards put that shit in there and it'll work, run them just fine you know so i'm stoked for this shit and it plays everything it plays uh sega genesis uh, Me- you know mega drive um Ma- i think master system games it plays too every and also it thing. says with an adopter you can play game gear oh forget about it man i'm fucking ready you know like when i was um playing with the super nintendo i'm like yo they need to make a genesis one I didn't think they were going to do it. The, the, well, guy they, it. Yeah. the guy was talking about it. I mean, in fact, the, the, the guy who made that chip for the year, previous console. The yeah, Super he was Nintendo a Sega one, guy. He was a Sega, Sega guy. Yeah. He was a Sega guy. Okay, yeah. I don't know how they did this, but they said if you have an original Sega CD, oh, it will work. Yes. I was like, holy shit, really? Yeah, I'm yeah. guessing on the side they have a thing. Now. Yeah, I'm guessing on the side you could click a, a Sega CD to it. Yeah, maybe they what they did is they just essentially, you know, you if you have that second version of the Sega CD, you can stick it into the side. I'm guessing the 32X. So do you think they're going to make a Sega CD replica next? Mm, I don't know about that. Like maybe as an add-on to this. Yeah, that would be cool. You know. No, cool. you can't put you can't put the new Sega the the, the first Sega CD nah, on. You can't. But yeah, Brett, if you slap your old Sega CD, you just click it onto this thing. You know. I, 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 I want to rebuild Voltron. Yes, yeah, the mega, yeah, the yeah. mega SG. I, the I'm Tower ready for of this power, shit. As I called it. Yeah, I like this story. So, yeah, and the whole FPGA technology is interesting because it like replicates the original circuitry, kind of. You mm-hmm. know, it, it like mimics, it, and it's not a a clone system, really. You know, no, it's uh, it's, it's essentially yeah, they're clo- essentially remaking. It's all hardware based 
sort of uh, w- w- work that they're doing. Well, no emulation is great. It yeah, no emulation. Yeah. No emulation at all. You know, so this is this, this, to me like this is like the ultimate solution. It's like, yeah, it's cool. You, you know, the only thing that kind of sucks for the really retro guys is you can't plug this into an old TV. It only works for modern TVs. You know. But I mean, the the one thing about I remember what they were saying though with that FPGA, they didn't use it on the the Super Nintendo one. They did. I mean, not the Super Nintendo, the the Nintendo one, and that's why the Nintendo one is so expensive. Oh, that makes sense. I was wondering about that. I'm you know I'm glad you bring that up. Do you think I think they should? You think they're gonna remake that Nintendo one with the they FPGA? They yeah, should. they probably should. But I mean, maybe they want to get through the stock that they currently have. Mm, Who knows? That's what I was thinking the price too. Of that thing, yeah, man. yeah, because I think Dude. it's like stupidly expensive. That Tony. one, they that one, they literally went and you know replicated all the chips and all kinds of that sorts that sort of stuff. Yeah. So. Go ahead, Brett. Uh, when you were playing your original Sega, did you sit there and think, in 25 years, I'm a pre-order me a Sega Genesis? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, probably obviously not because I'm like, this is the top of the food chain. You know, it's not going to get better than this. Well, I, kn- I knew things were going to like get better again. Like, I was like, man, like, can you imagine when the I think five? I think we were all talking about like, can you imagine when the PlayStation Five is out? Like, when the PlayStation was out, oh, and we're really? all like, hey, can you, can you? well, yeah, when the PS One was out, and everyone was like, dude, can you imagine what the PS Five is going to look like? Like, you you expected a progression. I never I never expected down the line to be like, oh yeah, man, they're they're reinventing. The Super Nintendo and, and Genesis, and that's the big thing. And I'm like, dude, that's the big thing now. That's the big thing in 1993. What are we doing? Yeah, you didn't think that these consoles would become, like, legendary, you know, because we were living in the time when those consoles were still new, you know? Yeah. So you, you didn't even consider that. We back cross colors. Car cross I. Colors. No, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Janko jeans. Come on. Let's Janko do jeans. it. <laughs> Bring back the 1993 Knicks. <laughs> right. the belt. Oh. Uh, I, I don't, don't get, get me started on Patrick Ewer. Yeah, you Pat, heard him on that. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, Dude, yeah. I'm telling it, you, if you live in the darkest timeline, I would happily go back to 1993. Oh, yeah. That's a whole other topic. Like, I, I, Actually, I would happily go back to uh, 2010. <laughs> right now, I'd so happily go back to yesterday. Shit. Man, no, man. Yesterday was still fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me look at the chat over here. Uh, Pele, Pele, <laughs> what? Pele, Pele. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I mean, down those, with this, man. Pants, I had a pair of Pele, Pele. And you know, hopefully, I'll get a, uh, I'll get the system to review too. I oh, I can't fucking wait. You know, yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool. I wonder if they uh, they're gonna do different colors like they did last time. You know, they had a transparent. Uh, yes, one. I believe, I believe they are. Yes, they are. Um, let's look at them. Um, uh, I think yeah, well, I think one of them's transparent. Let me look at this mm. shit. Okay, so okay, here we know they're not transparent. One of them is white, another one is like pure black, another one's like off black, another one's like another type of black. What the fuck? <laughs> like the only difference of the uh, of the fucking. I was wondering if I should screen share, but I got other shit going on here. Um, mm. I should, wait. The button color is some, you know, because I know the British the 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 well, you know, Mega let me Drive looks different I'll than I'll the. Show you guys, hold on. Uh, can you guys see this? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's what we got going on right now. Hmm. They, so, yeah. But, so, but you see, what, the last three, they don't look very different from one another, except for the buttons. Well, oh, you know what it is. It's go, okay, so the, the, the top right one, that one is the, the I think that's the 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 Genesis, red and white. Um, and, and then the left one, I think that might, the bottom left, that's Mega Drive. Okay, what about the white and gray? The white and gray might be the Japanese one. Yeah. By the way, shout out to Dual Shockers. This is where I'm getting all these from. Let's scroll through these. Um, analog. There's the controller. You already know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know which one that is right there. That's the bottom left one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's, you know, craziness. Uh, there's the cartridges. Actually, let me go back. I want to show you guys. This, this is kind of cool. So that's all the cartridges it takes. Oh, okay, so it just all it has is a cartridge uh, switcher thing. So yeah, so that's a third. I see a thirty-two X one in there mm. already. So yeah, break or rebuild the beast, man. This My is, body is ready. Okay, this well, one, that's a, thing, that, this right thing, here, maybe This is a mega a Sega mega. Um, what is it? not Mega Drive? Um, Master System, isn't it? Here's, Master the, System. Yeah. here's the thing, though. It's not like you you don't need the 32x. It looks like for this, you may not. You may just be able to pop the cartridges in. It looks like it just has a different oh, cartridge thing. Hold on, my mind just got exploded right now. 
<laughs> oh, by the way, uh, right here, check it out. This is Super Nintendo one. There's a Sega Nintendo. Genesis one. Uh, yeah. Yo, you're right about that, man. You just click them in. You just click in your cartridges. Manny, mm -hmm. break out that, that chaotics, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, check it out. Oh, man, that shit looks so fucking good. There's three buttons on here. I don't know if you see them. Right under the start. Yeah, one might be a save state button. Yeah. You know. All right, there's a system. That shit is so fucking sexy. Give me that shit, you know? And it uses all the old controllers, I'm guessing, too. Okay, check this out. So um, the, the first classic. yeah, the first button is a star. It looks like maybe the home button. Mm -hmm. On the, the middle one, it looks like a minus sign. And then I don't know what the last one is. I, I think that's the menu. I wonder if they're going to stick a, a stick like they did with the, the previous one, if they're going to stick a special game on there. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we saw all that. But I think they put what was it, Pro Protector that was on there? No, it was um Super Turrican on the on the Tur 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 Turrican, yeah. Yeah, Super Turrican one and two. Super Turrican. By the way, fun fact about um the last system, the opening title screen, the animation was Phil Fish. <laughs> he, he 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 actually did it, you know. And, and then you know, looking back, I'm like, oh, that's why it reminded me of Fez a little bit, you know. Kind of interesting. Crazy. So yeah, he... Phil Fish is Phil Fish is. I'm sure he's still out there doing things. He's just taking a yeah. break from. The oh, what's going on? Um, Moon Man. Uh, I can't read that because, by the way, it's hard to read any names in blue. Um, he goes, "Is that Tony? No, it's not. It's an imposter." <laughs> do I do? <laughs> you, yeah, it, of course it's Tony, man. Who hosts the show? You know what's going on, <laughs> man? <laughs> um, may, may it could be somebody that I know by a different name, though. That welcome to the room, man. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> the fucking Torrance Avatar, man. All right. Um, since again we're on Twitch now, we we we're gonna expand things. Uh, we're gonna make this permanent now. What games have you been playing? So uh, I'm gonna start with Carlos <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> Yo, man, I've been playing a whole lot of nothing, man. Uh -oh. Not even Heroes of the Storm. Really? Heroes of the Storm. Into <laughs> the Dun, 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 dun. All right, copy our strike art. Yeah, um, man. yeah, I haven't been playing anything. I um, I'm getting ready for my trip, so yeah, I haven't really been doing that much gaming. Yeah, no time, man. You got to prepare. Got to get ready, man. You know, gotta pick up wifey. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's waifu, man. Yeah, waifu. That's right. Get it right, man. All right, Adam, what you been playing, man? Uh, uh FIFA nineteen. Uh, a little bit of the Black Ops 4 multiplayer, not so much of the Battle Royale, but the multiplayer. Just trying to get used to these uh, specialist classes. Uh, what else? Um, uh, bombing um busters on Switch. And wait, is that uh, the name of a game or something you're doing? Oh, that's <laughs> it. It could be both, man. It could be both. Uh, but what else? I think that's, yeah, those are pretty much it. And, of course, the division every once in a while. Yo, by the way, but, speaking about busters, remember you used to call people that? You busted. Yeah, yeah busted. You, you buster, buster, you're you're buster, a buster. Remember? You're a buster. Yeah, you buster. And, and the other one was a sucker MC. Remember, remember I, that I, shit? I still, I still call people suckers. <laughs> sucker <laughs> MC, man. Sucker MCs. Yeah. All right, um, Brett, what you've been playing, man? Uh, of the storm. <laughs> oh, you got me. No, uh, I played uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Ah, yes. Uh, Assassin. I, I gotta say, the further into this game I get, and I know these are big words, I think it's my favorite Assassin's Creed after Black Flag. Excuse me. Actually, you know, to me, I think it might be my favorite because uh, that that uh, ancient Greek stuff, man. Whew, I'm Dude. ready. Uh, ancient Greek versus um, pirates are cool, man. But yeah. like in terms of just uh, you know the freeform gameplay, I mean the fucking. I, I actually zoomed out on the world yesterday because I was like, man, how big is it? I am shocked at how big the game world is. Yeah, it it's is fucking Greece. It's literally Greece, dude. It's crazy. Greece lightning. Yeah, it is. It is stupidly huge. So I'm. Um, I know it's. Uh, I, I'm a bit afraid that the best Assassin's Creed game in like damn near ten years is going to be overshadowed completely by uh, Red Dead. Oh shit! <laughs> how long? How long has it been since that this Assassin's Creed and the previous one? I think eight years. last year. The last one came out last year. Since, oh, so, yeah, they got, oh, so, they're, so yeah. they're back to back to the yearly no, development no, cycle. No, no, the, next year no Assassin's Creed. Next year. 
Okay. Honestly. Yes. Okay. Because remember, this game was in development when the other one was in development. That's what they uh, told me. You know. Um, so they told everybody. Yes. Uh, Shin Gok says that he is not feeling uh, Odyssey. Yeah. Interesting. Any, any I know a lot of people that aren't. They say too much fluff. I, I, a lot yeah, of grind, a lot of people a lot of love it. for the levels. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, because you have a special timeline. But yeah. for the rest of the world, I'm telling you, a lot of people that did play, they were like, yo, what's with these levels? Like, it's a level 15, and then the next main mission is like level 30 something. I'm like, shit, you got to do a lot of grinding just to get to the to continue do the those story. side quests, man. Do those side quests, and you'll be all so, right. You know? So, there's a, so, and the, and the, so they've given up on the future shit, haven't they? Hey, Brett, is there any modern day stuff in the game? <clears throat> yeah, they they seem to be pulling away from the Abstergo thing. Yeah. Um, and weirdly enough, this the other thing this has in common with Black Flag is you're not limited by or limited to Assassin Templar kind of stuff. Like for the most part, and I'm I'm not that that far in. I it took forever to get the prologue done, but I, I really haven't seen any heavy Assassin kind of stuff or Templar kind of stuff that, that's seems one to criticism be... i've heard that it, it doesn't feel like an assassin's creed game neither did well, black isn't flag or the isn't this too early for it yeah it's way yes. early you know because remember it's like that's, that's the last, does it have yeah. a battle royale mode too man what oh shit fuck? let's go um yeah because the last game was called origins but this one takes place like 400 years before that one it's the origin yeah. <laughs> it's the, the origin, origin of, of origins. origins yeah they said this one has more superhero elements like you guys are super Oh, powered. shit. Okay, so this dude didn't like uh, Black Flag either. Oh, okay. What, maybe what maybe Assassin's maybe. Creed did you like the best? Yeah, then? which one was your favorite? I'm guessing he's an Ezio guy, which is fine. Ezio was game. Ezio, I, 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 Ezio's fine. If he says three, get out. Yeah, I don't think anybody oh. is going to say three. <laughs> that would be so funny. Yeah, that would be funny if he said three, though. Like, well, no, and, no, and one says, it. no one says three and one and two, actually. Oh, no, by the way, no, two was all right. Two was right. No, like no one says that. No one says that two is their favorite. Yeah, Ezio is his favorite games. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Ezio was the best. By the way, yeah. I do need to bring this up a little bit of a, a side tangent here. As she saw an article, I again, people, do we have Google? We could research these things. They were saying that this Assassin's Creed game is so great because you could play as a female assassin from beginning to end. I guess they never owned a PSP, you know, because you could play that. Remember Assassin's Creed um, Revelations or whatever the fuck it was called? No, uh, Not Revelations, what was it? You know no, what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, yeah. Liberation. Liberation, Bro. yeah, the one that took, yeah. Play, the one that took place in, in New Orleans. I'm like, that yep. one's had a female. And she, and she, was, she, was, a, she, she was a former was, slave. Exactly. Yeah, but and, and they've been in it. I mean, Syndicate, you had the sister, and Unity, you had the sister. Yeah, no, they use that example. Like, oh, you get to play as a sister, but it wasn't the entire game. Oh, like, this no. is the first one in history. I'm like, no, what about Liberation from beginning yeah. to end? You play yeah. as that girl. You know, come on, people. Did we have Google here? Um, but yeah, no, I'm 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 stoked for it, man. Uh, I I can't wait. Um, and then the there was another the side scroll Assassin's Creed game, uh, the one that took also had a female protagonist as well, as I remember. Yeah, the China one. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, he um he says that um the co he did like the combat in three gameplay wise three was a good game gameplay wise mm -hmm. it was a very good game it's yeah. fucking connor that was a problem even connor, the story was, the story was good too it was connor that ruined it connor is a know? total post he's yeah. he has he has uh the same issue that uh that um that the first guy from the first assassin's creed had just a boring character yeah that's the problem he goes um, what, was his, what was his name fucking altair oh uh, no uh, yeah altair yeah yeah he was boring yeah, Shin Gok says, I can't complain too much, though Odyssey does have a lot of content, and I've spent a bunch of hours in a, in around 40s, but it just isn't Assassin's Creed anymore. If you spend 40 hours, that means the game can't be that bad, <laughs> you know? Shit. All right, um, Brad, anything else besides Assassin's Creed? No, yeah, that's about it. That's all I have time for right now. All right, Brian. Um, Once again, I've been playing a whole bunch of nothing. Um, mainly been reading Attack on Titan. Did you read? Oh, yeah. So, Brian, Brian, breaking news. What's up? I'm going to catch up to Attack on Titan manga on my trip. Oh, Carlos, yeah, please not... do and get ready because they're like four or five like like major drops that happens. Like, oh shit, oh shit. 
I had like a hip hop gaming moment, like I was in the bathroom just really. <laughs> 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 like, oh, like, oh, like, like, oh shit, really? Like uh, throw it on the floor, you stomp <laughs> on it, you let oh, oh, oh you Brian coming out of the bathroom with a wrestling belt on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's spinning it. He's spinning the belt. <laughs> but seriously though, it's like okay, I now know what's in the basement. Oh, um, oh, I'm coming over slap the fuck yeah, out of you right now. I'm talking to you for like till I finish this yes. shit because they do explain what's in the basement and they explain what's in the box. Oh, I can't even say that either. Fuck. Yeah, yeah Brian, Brian. Brian. All right, let's they, settle down. It's an old anime, yeah. son. They, they, explain, explain, <laughs> they explain the basement part. All right, that's, that's explain, enough from you, bro. That's enough. So much, you know, so much at this point in time, and it's wow, it's wow. They. Next Friday, Brian, I'll, I'll, I'll get in contact oh, with you. Carlos, that, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be caught up by then. The, the only thing I've done is I've watched the, this whole season. I've oh, did it. you see the end credit scene? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh. Yo, oh, it was crazy. Wait. Yo, Go watch it. Hey, um, Netflix, also... why don't you get an Attack on Titan translated? Come on, guys. <laughs> they still haven't translated okay. this shit? No, it's all still the first season in Japanese. Oh my, one more. Wow. Oh my, one more. Yeah, <laughs> that's cheap, man. Get that shit. Uh, I don't got Cartoon Network. Brian, what were you saying? Um, Chris, but sorry to disappoint you, but still no T Rex Titan. Oh, uh... yeah, or Flying Wheel Titan so far. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't, that, wasn't that Brett? <laughs> <laughs> that's Brett. Yeah, yeah no, no, that Brett was, was looking for his T Rex, and okay, no, I'm looking yeah. for the Whale Titan. God damn it! I want to know oh. how it flies in the air. All right, oh, I just, I just I, want you guys to know that I have a knife ready. If you keep going any further, I'm going to use it. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. Well, okay. Since, I, since, I, since, I, since I haven't gotten very far, I just love it. This is a, is a spoiler. I love the fact that in, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> this is a spoiler. This is a spoiler. Real real spoiler. Real 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 yeah, Motherfuckers going to get mad in the comments. This is not a anything. spoiler. I'm not spoiling anything. Uh, oh, they, you did that? <laughs> well, they 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 casually mention like the key Aaron got, and one of the characters is like, "Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that." I laughed my ass off. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a funny joke. Like, wait, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Um, who who else now? Chris. I have uh, hundred percented Metroid: Samus Returns. My man. Whoa. And there's a there's a post credit scene. Uh. So spoilers, Thanos appears <laughs> again. <laughs> Comes does out. Does he? Does he snap his fingers? No, he claps well, his he, hands he this just, time. <laughs> he, he comes out and smiles. That's it. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, besides that, I haven't really played anything else. I'm just wringing my hands, waiting for Red Dead. One of these. I'm just like, yeah, I can't wait. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like Birdman. Uh, yeah. yeah, Bird I've been watching. Uh, Kristen's been playing. Yes. Uh, I got her Starlink. The mm. oh, yeah, I heard game. about that game. I saw. Um, who was it? A um, Happy Console Gamer was talking about it uh, the other yeah. day. Yeah, and it was came with um, an R wing <laughs> and a little fox. Like the game responds pretty good when you snap that the the plane together and you put the weapons on. In the game, it just shows them snapping on, so it knows when you like modify the Crazy. little fighter. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, dude. Let me tell you something. They. No joke, looked at No Man's Sky <laughs> for some of the stuff. And they didn't take it straight up, but like there's some stuff where I'm like, mm, yeah, that looks a little like No Man's Sky. <laughs> but it, it's actually good. And the art style kind of like reminds me of um, kind of like Fortnite or something with the uh, stylized. Characters. Yeah, stylized characters and stuff. The the, the diverse mix in, in there. So I, I, but it looks fun. It, it's uh, she's enjoying it, and uh, I've been watching her play it. It's pretty good. I was wondering. I wanted to get the PS4 version to see if I could take her her R wing and put it on the PS4 yes. version. What would happen, right? If he appeared in there, can I send a screenshot to Nintendo? Hey, motherfuckers! I got this guy on PlayStation. <laughs> It'll just be a generic ship or something, you know? Yeah, it probably goes air. Eh, can't do it. Yeah. It, it'll give you some sort of Sony ship, like a <laughs> some sort of Sony spaceship. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, wait a minute, Manny. You could play anything. Uh, I'm mostly in a stalemate with God of War right now. No, it's not that. It's. 
It's not drunk. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's that. It's that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, the Viking shit. That's true. <laughs> a lot of boy. 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 I forgot I, your no, name. Uh, Speaking boy. of God of War, I am looking for a beard for my God of War uh, mask. My my uh my Kratos mask because now it's outdated because he st- it still has that little um the, the, the little pointy Lucifer beard yeah now yeah. he needs a full beard so now I'm gonna have to go to one of those uh, Halloween stores and get myself a <laughs> a beard for him <laughs> beard toast beard toast yeah um I haven't really been playing too many games but if you saw me the other day on a stream I am playing I actually just beat today Lego DC um super villains look i got i got one right here that's lex luthor you've got lex luthor by the way it is really funny um hearing clancy brown saying i'm lex luthor the greatest criminal mind (laughs) you know it's pretty fun by the way um this is shit i got because i did a a preview a couple weeks ago so i got this little lex luthor and then i got i don't know what the fuck this is but it's joker you know (laughs) the joker the joker by the way, it's interesting. You, it looks like you could write shit on the back, and then I'm, like, is this like for a door? Like, what the fuck is this? You know? But I'm not yeah, sure. I don't know what the fuck this is. It's like, uh, but it looks cool. Yeah, Joker. The game is fun, man. You know, it's a kids game. It's like, by the way, this is what I always said about those Traveler's Tales games. Like, they're deceptive. Even though they're kids games, they're deceptively difficult because they don't tell you anything. They kind of just have you just poking at everything until something works. You know. <laughs> Like, even when I was playing the Star Wars game, I'm like, what the fuck do I do now, you know? But, yeah, it's fun stuff. Um, if you got kids, check, you know, get it for them. It's, it's, it's fun. Um, and other than that, yeah, I'm just on standby mode. You know what's coming next week, people. Mm-hmm. You already uh-huh. know. <laughs> John Marston. John Marston. John Marston. Your son, John Marston! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Um, I guess we'll wrap it up here unless you guys want anything else to add at the end. We're on Twitch now. We have no time limits anymore. No. Yeah, there's time now. There's, there's time now. I don't know who's crunching on some stuff right now. I love when I call so, somebody out. Like, they don't say nothing. Like, oh, it wasn't me. So, I got something to say. Oh, uh, good. So, welcome, everyone, to Otanime episode 25. <laughs> 25, you know. Um. No, by the way, just quick, uh, Brian, the and and Chris, since you since you watched the end ending of the of the season, the reason why I'm reading the manga, I'm gonna start reading the manga, or, like get caught up on the manga, is because of the fucking end credit scene on the on the last episode. <laughs> that shit was just too much for me, man. You're like, I have I to know. know. You have yeah. to know what happens. Yeah, yeah it, it it's fucking crazy, man. I couldn't believe I... they put that shit in there. I was like, yes! what is a post credit scene? What? Yes, I haven't seen it, so I don't know what it is. But I probably know what it is because I read it. So, hmm. so then the season is over, right? The season's over, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, for the the subs, didn't they pull um a Game of Thrones where they split it in half? That's what I heard. Well, the it was season, like the season's 13. not really over. That's well, what I heard. It's like a mid break yeah because yeah, it's 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 like 13 episodes or 12 13 episodes and it's gonna continue like i think they already announced the next season or whatever half season or whatever it is spring of next year yeah so yeah i think that they did something like that kind of like the the mid-season finale and I'll carry on yeah pretty by soon the way uh year. shout out to uh spectrum because i was gonna start catching up on these um uh, but they're missing episodes so i'm like oh fuck now I, now I gotta go online to find these goddamn things tell, tell uh, adam to put it on his plex mm, adam <laughs> put it on your metroplex son. Yeah, metroplex exactly <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. Um, again, just to remind you guys, we are having a contest for Red Dead Redemption 2. We're going to give you a free physical or digital copy. And if you want to enter, you follow us on Twitch, you follow us on Twitter. And then when you head over to Twitter in the pinned tweet, there's going to be a question. It's going to ask you what your favorite Rockstar game is. You reply to that and we're going to se- select somebody at random. We're going to ask them on episode 207 of Throwdown, which should be on the 25th, the day before the game drops. It'll be interesting. Tell your tell your kids, tell your wife, man. <laughs> tell everybody, you know. Good stuff, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Um oh yeah, got to plug it. Riku Sun will be back tomorrow and Saturday doing his uh Kingdom Hearts. I don't know how far he is into the game, Manny. Maybe you could tell me how far he is cuz uh I mean, he was in he was in the uh, the 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 Lion King part. And I always 
felt that was like halfway through the game. So. Damn, and he's already done six episodes, so mm-hmm. Riku's going to be there for a while. As a matter of fact, he's probably going to still be streaming that even when Red Dead's out because, hey, no no Red Dead online. We ain't streaming that until that shit drops, so... Yep. You know, we, you know, but even then, we'll just do it another time because we promised Riku that time he's gonna keep do it. You know, he's gonna mm-hmm. keep to it. Um, by the way, shout out to uh, everybody who's enjoying all the the Torrance Davis avatars. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, man! This shit cracks me up every time. You know. <laughs> all right, man. So let's wrap it up. So thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe and throw it down on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at Throwdown Show. Links are located. In description below, once again, I was your host, Tony Polanco, and I was joined by Emilio Lopez. Just want to thank you guys for showing up for my extra long edition of Throwdown Draws. Uh, I did two pieces on, uh, last time from the, you know, some fun little Death Stranding fan arts. So, yeah, you know, if you uh, if you have a little time on your hands or a lot of time on your hands, you could watch the whole thing or watch them in sections. Uh Throw, uh, throw it on draws. Uh, you know, we're you know, I'm gonna try to stick to the schedule. Is is happening every has been every Wednesday for about an hour or two two hours or whatever long or seven I hours or seven hours, wherever long it takes to do the, to do what I need to do. So yeah, so yeah, be sure to you know check that out. And also you know for you know those of you on YouTube, um, you know that will be posted the following week, so you'll see that later. So yeah. Chris Seeley. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. This is my last throwdown for a while. So hopefully everything goes smoothly next couple of weeks. Are we going to get like a drunken call from you on uh, on here? (laughs) I don't think drunk. I actually might pop in because it's like it's going to be early in the morning over there. Mm -hmm. So I might be like just waking up like, oh, shit. Yeah, man. Just so you'll be like the reverse of Brian. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Brian's getting just getting up for work right now. So, yeah, he's actually been sleeping this entire time, even though he's talking to us. <laughs> crazy. All right, Brett Murdoch. It's real, everybody. Adam Vale. Have a great weekend, people. And Mr. Brian Monjoma. Later, people. All right, guys. We'll see you uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> Later. Deuces. Laters. Peace.